following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to Field and Stream Stores Kickoff Week. Welcome to the AdvoCare Texas Kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart as part of Field and Stream Stores Kickoff Week. NRG Stadium in Houston. It's a top 15 matchup to kick off the best college football opening weekend ever. Third ranked Oklahoma, a playoff team from a year ago. And the Houston Cougars, fresh off a 13 win season and a New Year's Six Bowl win. Hi, everybody. Alongside Greg McElroy, I'm Dave Pash. And Greg, there are four games this opening weekend with ranked teams involved, but this is the only one featuring two teams that finish in the top 10 in 2015 and all the stars are back the headliner is baker mayfield the outstanding oklahoma quarterback who is big 12 offensive player of the year he has bigger goals though in mind here in 2016. he's one of the best in the country as far as keeping plays alive in the pocket he's so creative now they don't design a lot of runs for him but the way he extends plays and allows his receivers time to get open there's few in the country that do it better than him that's why he finished fourth in the heisman last year Houston's going to have their hands full with this quarterback today. All right, Tom Luganville is our field analyst, and Tom Greg Ward, the quarterback on the other side for Houston. So dangerous running the ball among returning players. The only guy that had more rushing touchdowns was LSU's Leonard Fournette. Yes, and Greg Ward Jr. touches the ball on every snap. Oklahoma defensively ends last season with Deshaun Watson, but Greg Ward Jr., the Houston quarterback, is an entirely different dimension. Diminutive, explosive, sudden for Oklahoma on defense. This is akin to Rocky chasing chickens in the alley. Should be a good one. Kickoff is coming up between Houston and Oklahoma. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to the Advocare Texas kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart. They pass Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville here in Houston for the Cougars and Sooners. Oklahoma ranked in the top five for the fifth time preseason team history, but they've never finished higher than 15th when that's the case. Bob Stoops is now the longest tenured coach by one day over Kirk Ferentz in college football. 18th year for Stoops at OU. And on the other side, you've got Tom Herman only in his second year, but if he wins today, he'll be the hottest commodity in coaching if he isn't already. <laughs> I think he already is. A lot of people really believe in the system that he tries to apply. He has everybody here in Houston really paying attention to this football team. Uh, we woke up to uh, some scary news this morning with an earthquake measured at 5.6 that centered near Pawnee, Oklahoma, which is about 100 miles from Norman. It was felt all the way down in Arlington where the USC Alabama game will be tonight but the latest reports say there is some damage but no injuries it is the biggest quake in Oklahoma since 2011 Sooners won the toss they will receive Ty Cummings will boot it deep to Joe Mixon and Daniel Brooks for Oklahoma and it'll be Mixon from the two He's past the 20-yard line, and that's about it. Baker Mayfield, one of the best stories in college football, a two-time walk-on. He started out at Texas Tech, was the freshman of the year, 2013, transferred to Oklahoma, where he won the Burlesworth Trophy, which goes to the best player who began his career as a walk-on. He finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting. He accounted for 43 touchdowns, 3,700 passing yards in 2015. Redshirt Jr., he got a year back of eligibility, which was originally lost due to NCAA rules, but he got it back, so he's got two more years to play for OU. From the 21, he'll swing it out to P. Ryan, and P. Ryan picks up about five to the 26-yard line. You see, that's Mayfield shushing all the critics a year ago and wondered if this guy could lead Oklahoma to a playoff spot. It's not about stats. It's all about intangibles with Baker Mayfield. He's one of the best in the country about making everyone else around him better. Mayfield's throw is pulled in. First down grab by D.D. Westbrook. 
I understand, Greg, you voted for Mayfield to win the Heisman Trophy last year. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous that he wasn't in New York for their ceremony. I thought he was as good as anybody in the country. He made OU so much better. When he wasn't on the field, they were a totally different team. He's off to a good start here. And a high snap. Mayfield does a good job. And he's going to get out of trouble across the 30-yard line. Mayfield past the 40 and slides to the 41. Wow. A brand new center being broken in Jonathan Alvarez. He was a guard last year. He also has a talented freshman lining up in front of him, Ed Oliver. We'll get to him a little later. But Baker Mayfield, this is what he does. You just can't prepare for it. He can make something out of nothing. And he did it time and time again over the course of the season last year. You know, he's got some of that Johnny Manziel swagger, and he makes some plays like Manziel. Picked up seven yards there when he should have lost seven. It's P. Ryan on second and short, and a huge hole off the right edge. P. Ryan into Houston territory. Garrett Davis finally gets him down after a pickup of 15. It's the healthiest P. Ryan's ever been. He was banged up at the end of last year, still ran for a ton of yards, a ton of touchdowns, a lot of production. He's one of the best backs in the country, and I think him and Joe Mixon make up a one-two punch that everybody wishes they had. Think about it. He needs only 1,000 yards this year to break the Oklahoma rushing record. All the greats that have played here, Adrian Peterson, Billy Sims, P. Ryan, statistically will be the best by the time he's done. He's to the 40-yard line. Four yards there. Matthew Adams brings him down. I think it's pretty safe to assume he will be, by season's end, Oklahoma's career-leading rusher, like you said, 1,000 yards away. The way he's going, and the way he looks, and the way he practices, he might get there by about game eight or nine. Coaches say he's a little bit faster this year. 235 pounds. Mayfield to Westbrook, and he's tripped up. But able to get close to the first down. They're going to spot him down at the 35, just short. So it'll be third and one for the Sooners. And right here, thinking run play all the way because you still probably are thinking fourth down you're going to go for it anyways even if you come up short and p ryan able to get the first down driven back but he did pick it up when you look at this offense fellas oklahoma no joe mixon yet in fact he's coming in the game right now it's been 36 dimitri flowers and samaj p ryan the intent to run the football is to get an undersized Houston defense to load the box, and that's why you're seeing these quick hitters out on the perimeter to get Oklahoma's skilled personnel in space right now. And Luke's Mixon compliments P. Run. P. Run, big body, Mixon, smooth, elusive athlete. And here is Mixon at 6'1, 220, and he's got speed, and he's got a touchdown. A 32-yard touchdown run by Joe Mixon. Great start for Oklahoma. He had seven rushing touchdowns last year. Now Austin Seibert makes it 7-0 OU. What a start for Oklahoma and you can see right here Joe Mixon lining up in the backfield he's absolutely automatic once he hits that left foot immediately right up field there's nobody home and once he turns on the afterburners very few people in the country can catch him he's a decisive runner and he compliments P Ryan so perfectly P Ryan's gonna beat you up he's gonna earn the tough yards and then, sure enough, when your defense is a little gassed, you got to chase a guy that's probably a sub-4-5 at 2-10 that can flat-out fly. He's a big play back, had three touchdown runs at 20 yards or more a year ago. That one went for 32. Mixon and Piron, along with Mayfield, make up the best backfield in college football, right, those three? I mean, show me someone that's even close. I mean, I think those three together, with the way they work together, too, uh, Piron and Mixon, Mixon will be out at wide receiver. They'll move him around very versatile. They'll be on the field at the same time. Mayfield, the way he extends plays, makes everyone else around him better. And the way P. Ryan gets downhill and runs with, with a lot of, lot of power and low to the ground. So they work so well together. And 
they really do make up, I think, what is arguably the best backfield in college football. So Brandon Wilson, a very dangerous return man, will get a crack at this one here for Houston. Well, he stumbled. Lose a shoe there? The shoe. Yeah, and he doesn't make it to the 15. Dumped at the 12. So Greg Ward Jr. will be backed up, but he's a dynamic player. Started his career at Houston as a wide receiver, was moved to quarterback last year, and was the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl MVP, set a bunch of records, not just in Houston, but in the American Conference. 21 rushing touchdowns only. Fournette had more, plus he had 17 passing touchdowns, and he doesn't turn the ball over. Only 185 pounds, 5'11". He's actually gained 12 pounds from a year ago. Kevin just is starting. He's going to start the first play, and then Duke Catalan will come in. Catalan being benched, a conditioning issue. Ward rolling out. His pass pulled in, a broken tackle. Dunbar still going. Finally wrapped up at the 30-yard line after 19 yards. Ward, one of two quarterbacks last year to rush for 1,000 yards and pass for 2,000. The other guy was Deshaun Watson. Watson passed for 4,000. <laughs> Quick pass to Catalan, and Catalan stays in bounds. Finally shoved out around midfield by Ahmad Thomas. It's a great run by Catalan, but an even better block by Chance Allen, the Z receiver on the outside, locking up, holding him in DB for a long time. Nice work. Ward off play action, almost a one-handed grab. Linnell Bonner unable to hang on. Second down and 10. Ward is just so quick. It's so hard to simulate what he does at quarterback. Fortunately for OU, they have a player named Kyler Murray who played at Texas A&M, all-world recruit a couple years ago, who is a little bit similar in stature and speed. So they are at least a little prepared for what Greg Ward can do to them with his legs. Tried to simulate him in practice. Here's Catalan, finds a running lane. Catalan inside the 40-yard line. Jordan Thomas and Ahmad Thomas on the tackle. Catalan, a Texas transfer. He verbaled before his junior year of high school. Ends up back here in Houston, his hometown. On first down, Ward drilled as he throws deep. Overshot, Chance Allen. He took a lick, too, from Okoronkwo, but... Got the pass out there. And a good job of him staying in there, sticking with his progression. Knows he's going to get hit. Tough guy. Not the biggest guy in the world. Don't want to take a ton of those. But good job giving it at least a chance down the right-hand side. It looks like Oklahoma bringing some pressure early, trying to get Ward off his rhythm. Ward told us yesterday he's really improved as a passer and as a leader. He's a real quiet guy. He was pushed by the coaches to be more vocal, and he's done that. There goes Catalan in motion. They swing it to him. And Catalan is stood up and dropped by Stephen Parker. Parker lost his helmet. He's going to have to come out for a play. It'll be third down and long here for the Cougars. Right here, you're sitting at the plus 37-yard line. Might be four down territory. So right here, don't try to get it all. Just get it to where you can at least make a decision on the next snap, whether or not to go for it, try a field goal, or do something different. Let's see if not having Parker on the field hurts Oklahoma. He had to come out losing the helmets. And uh, his backup is Khalil Haught, and the sophomore has not played in a ton of games. Obvious passing situation. Ward with time, airing it out. Got a man! Broken up at the last second. Intended for Dunbar, Dakota Austin, and a late penalty flag thrown at the 14-yard line. Really late. It looked like good coverage live to me. Looked like great coverage. Looked like he timed it right. Looked like a good play by Dakota Austin. I'm not sure what they saw. by the defense, number 27. Let's see here if Dakota Austin gets his hand on him before the ball arrives. I mean, 
They're both tangled up there. That's a bad call. Yeah, I think right there, third and long, I'd keep the whistle in my pocket. I think that's clean, and I'm an offensive guy. Usually I'm going to lean on the offense. Now Stoops has a point. Dunbar had his hand on Austin. Austin had his hand on Dunbar. It's a first down for Houston on the 22. It's Catalan, and he's got no running room. Will Johnson there first. No game. When you see that matchup down the sideline, as I was standing right next to Stephen Dunbar, aside from a call that was a poor call, Stephen Dunbar gets up and looks right at Greg Ward Jr. says, hey, that's on me. Standing behind him, Stephen Dunbar only attempted to get one hand on the football to catch the ball. Should have caught the football, and they'd be sitting there with a touchdown on the two-yard or on the two-yard line. I'm with you, Luke. I mean, I think if you go up with two, high point it, he's got a better chance at it, trying to shield off that defender. Here's Catalan, little misdirection. Stacked up as another Oklahoma helmet comes off at the 19-yard line. So that's a pickup of three. It'll bring up third down and seven. That's Jordan Evans, captain linebacker, that will have to come out for this play. Don't want to lose him. Not on third and, and an important down right here in the red zone. Great thing about having Ward at quarterback. He can go run or pass here because the ball in his hand, he's your best playmaker, so gives Major Apple at the OC everything in his playbook, even on third and long. We're going to hand it off here to Catalan. Nowhere to go. Emmanuel Beal, who came in for Jordan Evans, in on the stop with Tay Evans. Interesting call there. Don't know if that was a, a read, a misread by the quarterback to hand it there. Who knows? But just a straight hand on a third down, and Houston has to kick a field goal. Major Applewhite, uh, the offensive coordinator. Second year here at Houston. The entire staff, save one assistant, stayed with Tom Herman, and all of them had chances to go elsewhere after a 13-win season. And the attempt sneaks inside that left upright for Ty Cummings to get the Cougars on the board. Best kickoff weekend ever starting here in Houston. Of these games, Greg, which stands out to you the most? I got to go to Monday. As good as Saturday is, believe me, Monday, Ole Miss, Florida State, Ole Miss, a lot of people think with the pieces they lost, they might have a year in which they slip back a little bit. Then Florida State, Lukes, they look pretty dang good. Yeah, Coming they're off a tough loss this Houston team in the bowl game. Uh, no question about it. And then I'm also looking to, to Notre Dame and Texas. What does Charlie Strong and those Texas Longhorns bring to the table? Let's get a look at their quarterbacks. Deep kickoff, and it'll be a touchback. OU will start at the 25. Let's say hello to Cassidy Hubbard in the studio. Hello, Dave and Greg. Taco Bell studio update number six, Ohio State hosting Bowling Green. JT Barrett, undisputed start of the season, but this isn't the start he wanted. Picked off on his first possession by Brandon Harris, 63 yards, but JT responded with a 47-yard TD pass on the next possession. All tallied up at seven. Dave, Greg. <laughs> All right, Cassidy, 7-3. Oklahoma in front, and the Sooners with their second offensive series. Joe Mixon, who just had that touchdown run, is out there for Oklahoma on first and 10 at the Sooner 25. Mayfield with a ton of time, throwing a deep ball to Mixon. What a ground! Mixon breaks a tackle. Finally brought down at the 15. What a catch. What a catch. Wow, every quarterback is always told, hey, know who you're throwing it to. Running backs, you got to put it right on them. Baker Mayfield a little overthrown. Mixon makes up for it. What an incredible play. Here's the Westbrook on the one. wide receiver screen. Bumped out of bounds at a 10. Gets into a little bit of a shoving match with Garrett Davis. Up tempo by the Sooners. Second and five. Mixon comes out. T-Rhyme goes in. 
And Flowers, too. He does a really nice job at the fullback spot. Kind of a unsung hero in the backfield. Doesn't get mentioned enough, but does a lot of good things for him. Number 36 on the left side of Baker Mayfield. Play fake. Mayfield. Everybody covered. Mayfield dancing out of there. Heading for the sideline. Gets positive yardage. Picked up one. Third down and four. Good job right there by the Houston defense. Not uncovering from the wide receivers. Baker Mayfield, you see when he exits the pocket, he's still looking downfield. Right here on third down, though, Todd Orlando, I bet you he's bringing some pressure. Make Baker Mayfield throw it a little quicker than he probably wants to here in the red zone. Keep an eye on that guy, number 10, for Houston to get some push. Ed nose guard for the Cougars. They double him. Mayfield pumps, backs up, looking, steps up, takes off, and takes a shot. Wow, Matthew Adams pummels him. A one-yard game, but it's fourth down. Such a good job in the secondary. Such a good job by this inexperienced secondary. And then Baker Mayfield, look, he slid when he had a runner a little earlier. These are the hits he has to avoid. He got dinged up a couple times last year. He needs to be a little smarter. I know it's third down trying to make a play, but he's too important, too valuable to this team to take hits like that on a regular basis. Now he missed games last year because of those shots. Seibert going to try a 25-yarder. And it's good. But that has to feel like a win for Houston after that big pass play to Mixon. The Cougars on defense hold and it's 10-3 Oklahoma. Intriguing Sunday night football matchup on ABC. A lot of people think Texas is improved and could knock off number 10 Notre Dame. That game is in Austin, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC tomorrow night. We are kicking off the greatest opening college football weekend ever here from Houston. We expect a lot of scoring. We've got it already, 10-3 midway through the first. Brandon Wilson is deep for the Cougars. And Wilson well, thought about taking a knee, and he wouldn't even make it to the 10. Last time, he was brought down at the 12. Taylor with the stop for OU. Let's take a look at today's Good Hands play, brought to you by Allstate. And this is just an off-season of study. You can see the safeties dialed in. They're exiting and they're departing. They're getting off the hashes, which allows an awful lot of free space for Joe Mixon to just squirt right up the middle. Absolutely runs right by the middle linebacker whose eyes are in the backfield because they're concerned about Baker Mayfield and his ability to run. You can't play man-to-man -man against Baker Mayfield. You have to play zone. Therefore, the linebackers get caught napping. There goes Joe Mixon right by him. What a catch by the running back. He got already 100 yards of total offense, Mixon. Houston backed up again. First down on the seven. And Catalan got drilled, but it was Ward keeping the ball. He got leveled as well. Tay Evans hit Ward, so Oklahoma didn't buy that fake. They hit both guys, the ball carrier <laughs> and the guy that Ward faked it to. They worked that play a lot in practice. I'm not surprised that they had it dialed up. That is one that Houston has run an awful lot, and Clemson actually hit him within the bowl game with a big 46-yard run by Deshaun Watson on the left-hand side. That was one of two losses last year for the Sooners. The other loss was against Texas. Second and 11. Ward from his one finds Catalan out in the flat. And Catalan gets rid of Will Johnson and picks up the first down. Big hit by Catalan out in space. They've run that wide route, the swing route by the running back three times now. Watch. I bet you Houston will do a little pump fake off of it at some point. Quarterback run. And Ward dropped at the 24-yard line. No, Greg, you made reference to Kyler Murray and his transfer to Oklahoma and what he's meant to the preparation of this Houston offense because he's the same style of player, that same explosiveness, that same speed. And so when you're practicing against that, 
that is how Oklahoma has prepared. And so far, they have been dialed in, have not had gaping wide holes within their front. They've really been dialed in for Mike Stoops. Stephen Parker banged up. And Greg and Tom will discuss that more when we come back. 10-3 Oklahoma. The AdvoCare Texas kickoff, presented by Walmart, brought to you by AdvoCare. We build champions. Walmart, this season, celebrate game time with savings from Walmart. And in part by Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. 10-3 Oklahoma in front of Houston. A matchup of top 15 teams. The only game opening weekend with a pair of teams that finish in the top 10 last year and Greg Ward Jr. the outstanding quarterback for Houston second and seven for the Cougars inside their 25 little option the pitch to Catalog able to outrun the defense shoved out well it was pretty close to late short of the first down Greg if you notice their number 12 for Oklahoma Will Johnson kind of playing games between coming into the box, going out to the slot, so Greg Ward can't get a beat on and get the numbers advantage he wants. Ward to the air on third down, and a strike, Dunbar, he's loose, dragged down. And Lugs, you're absolutely right. I mean, they have done a really good job being patient in their keys defensively. Ward yeah. got a ton of attempts so far. But they're doing a good job slow playing and not being overly aggressive, which I think they were last year at times against dual threat quarterbacks. Meanwhile, Okoronkwo may have just saved the touchdown. That was a 16 yard pickup. There was some movement. Can be a flag here. Dunbar at the top of your screen for Houston. A false start by number 88 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Lukes, we were at practice on Wednesday, and we actually saw this Oklahoma defense literally just chasing Kyler Murray around the field, trying to position the football and break down so they're in position to make the tackle. I hadn't seen that that close to game time before. Yeah, I mean, it was really the whole focal point uh, of their practice late in the week. You and I tried to simulate. I think I juked you out a couple times, too. <laughs> Ward on the pump fake comes the other way. And a diving attempt, but incomplete. Bonner could not hang on. He had Hawk, who is uh, Stephen Parker's replacement. Parker starting safety for Oklahoma. Shake it up. Let's see here. Now definitely an incomplete pass. It's good effort, though, and good coverage. Going right after Quill Houghton early. First couple snaps in. Go cover a corner out, big man. Boy, they already got the shoulder pads off. It was a wicked shot. Parker helmet to shoulder of Greg Ward. Second and 15. Kevin Justice in now and running back. The wide receiver screen. There's Isaiah Johnson. Pass midfield. Gets the first down. Tay Evans slams into the ground, but it's an 11-yard pass play. Look at the first down, Greg. You get a first down. Look how fast Houston is getting to the line of scrimmage. They do not want to allow Oklahoma to be able to substitute here. This is where you start kicking in the tempo. From the OU 46. Greg Ward doing a lot more this this year than we saw last year. They gave him a lot more freedom. Oklahoma bringing a blitz. Ward gets back to the line of scrimmage, brought down by Jordan Evans, third and long. Second and long, excuse me. Second and long. You have everything here. Lugs, I mean, we haven't seen a quarterback draw yet from Greg Ward. That's something they run all the time, a lead draw. At some point, you got to assume that's going to be dialed up by Major Applewhite, the Houston offensive coordinator. How'd you like, like that little uh, formation? And they shifted it back. I like it. Literally about a foot from each other. That's another quarterback back there, De'Ara King. And there's two quarterbacks running the option. Ward keeps it. Brought down at the 41. So he gets a chunk. To bring up a third, five or six here. King was a quarterback signed as a QB. He's got to play wide receiver right now because they don't have a lot of depth there. He's quick, though, man. 
Lutz. You liked him a lot. I know when he was coming out. So explosive. The noise is kicking up down here now, guys. Big third down here. Houston with a little momentum after holding the Sooners to a field goal. Two minutes remaining here in the opening quarter. Ward with time, got single coverage, and the pass is juggled and caught. Dunbar with the grab inside the 10. See him picking up the pace. They don't want to possibly get a challenge right here. This is heads up playing right here by Greg Ward. You know that they might take a peek at it. You don't want them to have that opportunity. So let's get a playoff as humanly, as fast as humanly possible. 32-yard pass play. Bob Stoops is trying to call timeout to challenge the play. Now again, every play in college football is reviewed. There's a penalty flag down. A false start, number 74 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. That, that's the danger when you're trying to get up there and snap it quickly. One of your guys moves, and it costs you five yards. Stoops was calling timeout to try to challenge that. Let's see if our pylon can, can show us whether this was a catch. I think that's a grab. Yeah, it looks clean to me. It's just that nose of the football. Does it touch the ground as he's going to the ground? And does he just secure it? Does the ball move at all? And it can move Is a it? little bit as long as you don't lose possession. It can hit the ball. Yeah, but it's clean. Here we go. Catalan. Good run by Catalan between the tackles. Gets inside the 10. This is a dimension that Houston had last year, but they're thinking that Catalan uh, can give them an even better option at the tailback spot. 12th play of the drive. They're inside the 10 yard line. Ward back to throw. Moving to his left and throws it away. A smart play there by Ward. Nothing there. Very smart. Give yourself an opportunity on third down. Don't make a bad play worse. Lugs, this Houston offense, they gain a ton of yards, and they're just as good in the red zone. Really excelled there last year. You know, you talk about all the stats that everybody wants to follow. They care about two stats here on offense, third down conversion and red zone production. That's why this drive's so critical down by seven. Welcome to 2016. It's all about tempo offenses and bend, don't break defensively. Third and goal. Design quarterback run for Ward, and he's dropped at the line of scrimmage. It's interesting. Twice they get down there. The first time they do a straight handoff. The second time a design quarterback run. Very conservative in the red zone to get points on both drives. You agree with that? Those plays have been effective for this Houston team before, but right now a lot of their success is on the perimeter. The bubble screen, some of the quick throws to the outside. They haven't had a, lot, a ton of success inside just yet. I think they're trying to get comfortable and get into the flow of the game. But I'm good with the play call because you're still going to get an opportunity to kick a field goal and you're not going to potentially make a mistake by throwing it into coverage. So that's the end of the first quarter. Houston will attempt to field goal when we come back. 10-3, Oklahoma after one. You're watching the American Conference on ABC. The Houston Cougars, who represented the group of five in the New Year's Six Bowl last year, beat Florida State to win 13 games. They finished eighth. They're 15th to start 2016. They've looked good so far. But stopped twice in the red zone, had to settle for field goal attempts. This will be a 27-yard try by Ty Cummings. He only had eight attempts all of last year. It's the second one of this game. And that one just sneaks inside the right upright. Now let's go inside Houston on its week leading up to the game. Today's AT&T Inside Access. When you're around Tom Herman and his program, there's going to be fun, win or lose. And it's been a lot of winning, but guys playing wiffle ball the other day. Every day. Every day. And how about the this? guys look forward to going up and getting there? Two GAs. This is Nick Saban had you guys do this, right? Uh, not Alabama? a lot. No, not a lot. But I love this. I mean, on Easter, you see two guys dressed as the Easter Bunny, a couple GAs. Get pretty competitive, a little feisty. I imagine there were some bragging rights on the line there. What do you think, Pash? Look at Todd Orlando. He loves it. Former uh, Big Ten <laughs> linebacker getting fired up. And 
Luke's we talked with Tom Herman yesterday and, and again he lost just one coach who got a better opportunity Todd Orlando had a chance to go to Wisconsin he turned that down major Applewhite had some opportunities they told us it's because when you're on Tom Herman coaching is fun look it's a grind it's a long year but he makes it fun every day it's hard enough to coach this game and to produce wins who wants to go to work and be miserable every day so the work environment here is a big component not to mention They've got some things rolling in a bright future. It'll be a touchback. OU starts at the 25. Here's Cassidy. Thanks, Nitsa. Opening weekend studio update. Number seven, Michigan hosting Hawaii over on ESPN. Jake Butt with his 17th consecutive game with a reception, and this one ends with a reach and dive for the touchdown. Now up 21-0 over on ESPN, guys. Greg, everybody's on the Michigan bandwagon, thinking they're going to win the Big Ten. Are you, or, or are you looking at Ohio State as the favorite going into the I'm year? I'm leaning towards the Buckeyes. I, I know that game's in Columbus at the end of the year. I look at how that team finished. I know they lost so many high-quality players, but the way Urban Meyer's recruited and the culture he's built, it seems like every year they're going to be in the conversation around the college football playoff. People are talking about Mayfield, Deshaun Watson, as quarterbacks that will be in, in the Heisman discussion. Don't sleep on JT Barrett a couple years ago was the Big Ten offensive player of the year until he got hurt against Michigan and Cardell Jones goes in and wins him a national championship well and it's his show it's his locker room and there's no looking over the shoulder uh, trust me Ohio State still has the best players in the Big Ten and I, I agree that that quarterback could be a dark horse if they go on a run Oklahoma starting this drive on its 25 yard line and it's a pass play. It's P line out of the backfield. Oh, what a shot he took. Garrett Davis. And that's a big dude that you are somehow getting to the ground at 235 and P Ryan. Squaring him up, man. I'll tell you what, this Houston team, sometimes group of five teams, don't look quite as impressive physically. That's not the case for the Houston Cougars. When you go and watch them practice, they have guys all over the field that look like big-time program players, one of which is their nose tackle. And P. Ryan with the, you're talking about Ed Oliver, Ed P. Oliver. Ryan with the left yeah. shoulder that he's favoring after getting drilled by Garrett Davis. So Mixon is in the game, along with Daniel Brooks right now for Oklahoma. And here is Brooks trying to get outside. Wrapped up and dropped. Brandon Wilson in run support, along with Steven Taylor, an excellent player, an inside linebacker for the Cougars. And it's unfortunate. Oklahoma's third string running back is Rodney Anderson. He actually is going to miss the season with a neck injury. So they turn here, obviously, to Daniel Brooks, who's one of the fastest players on the team, but certainly not as big or as powerful as what Samaj P. Ryan has been. Mac, that's a great point on Anderson. The coaches told us they're going to miss him, even though they have Mixon and P. Ryan. That they felt that was a big loss. Here's third and one. Mixon. No way. Brought down to the backfield by a host of Cougars. Ed Oliver leading the charge. The nose tackle you mentioned. Forcing a punt. It's a great call by Todd Orlando. Bringing pressure. Making sure that they wrap up in the backfield. You had a feeling that Joe Mixon was going to come downhill on third and short. P. Ryan would usually be the guy in that situation. They had to rely on the faster, more elusive player. Unfortunately, they're starting running back. Samaj P. Ryan's on the sideline nursing an injury. Here's Seibert, who handles all the kicking duties for Oklahoma. And the fair catch made by Dunbar at the 25. Greg Ward Jr. back at it. His team down four, early second. Monday on ESPN. Terrific top 15 matchup with 11th ranked Ole Miss and number four Florida State with our coverage starting at 8 Eastern from Orlando. Dalvin Cook, a potential Heisman candidate. The Houston Cougar defense shut down Dalvin Cook in the New Year's Six game last year, and they've done a good job against the run, save that one long touchdown run by Mixon. Houston starting on its 25-yard line. Ward going to lob it for Dunbar, who beats his man but can't make the grab. 
Guys, over here on the Oklahoma sideline, two things. Number one, Samaj P. Ryan being examined by the medical staff in his neck and left shoulder area as they continue to reach in through his shoulder pads along his back and up through his left shoulder. He continues to be evaluated. And secondly, the offensive line coach, Bill Bedenbaugh, and Bob Stoops not happy with this offensive line, giving him an earful here. Yeah, Mixon tackled for a loss on third and a yard, forcing the punt. Oklahoma bringing a little pressure. Ward on the rollout, and that pass too tall. Intended for Chance Allen. It's third and ten. Here's what Tom was talking about during the break. Bob Stoops upset with the job that they're doing up front on offense. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame him. I mean, right now, especially on third and one, Oklahoma, they're running a downhill play. There's no way Orlando Brown right there seeing getting singled out. There's no way you can let someone beat you inside, and that's exactly what Cameron Malvo did to the talented All-American freshman from a year ago. Third and ten. Ward is two for two on third downs through the air. Great adjustment, and Bonner able to pull it in. We have seen some terrific catches here in the first half. Bonner with an excellent catch. Great catch, but even better throw. Remember we warned you about the pump? There it is. Back shoulder throw. It is absolutely impossible to cover. Excellent accuracy on display outside the numbers by Greg Ward. It's an area in which he's tried to improve over the offseason. And I don't think it's even close how much better of a passer he is and what we've seen in this game as to what we saw in the Peach Bowl last year. They run cattle on here. He's hog tied. After a gain of about three yards, tackle made by Austin Roberts. A couple of yards there on first and ten. Interesting, not a ton of tempo right here. Houston, usually after a first down, they are a million miles an hour. Trying to get the right play called here, I think Major Rappelwhite's doing. So playing a little bit slower, making sure they have the correct play ready to roll. Here's Ward on second and eight, rolling out. Both levels covered, and Ward, as a flag flies, still completes the pass as Bonner was in bounds when he caught it. Flag was thrown in the secondary. Looked like we might actually have something at the line of scrimmage. I saw one of the offensive linemen dive towards a defensive lineman's leg when he was engaged. We'll see if that was the call. Yeah, check that. That was a towel that was thrown in the secondary. The flag is thrown at the line <laughs> of scrimmage. A block below the waist by number 69 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's still second down. And they've had some costly penalties. That one, they had the false start on first and goal inside the Oklahoma 10 earlier. Yeah, and you can see right here, 69 to center, Will Noble. He's an experienced player. You can't make this mistake. He's running, he's running, he's running. He doesn't see anybody. Hey, let's take a chance at somebody down below. Make sure we give our quarterback a little extra time. I understand the intent was trying to keep your quarterback up right, but when that player's engaged, you can't go below the waist. Good job by the officials calling it and penalize the Cougars. So that makes it second and 23 at the Houston 31-yard line. Ward with time, looking, waiting, now zips it downfield, open man, it's caught inside the 30 by Johnson, Ward with a strike, and Johnson kept moving, finally shook the defender, and it's a gain of 45 yards, tempo, 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 they don't want to let Oklahoma substitute, here they come in the red zone, Ward rolls left, and dumps it off to Bonner. Scoots out at the 14-yard line, right at the first down marker. So Houston in the red zone, Greg, the last two times they were down here. Now they got third down. They stayed conservative. Let's keep an eye on the play calling here. Don't want to take the ball out of Greg Ward's hands too often. He's not the most accurate passer, so I understand if they want to keep it on the ground and let him win with his legs. Ward, oh, Catalan wide open, an easy touchdown, Houston leads.
We said keep an eye on the play, calling. How about that one dialed up by Major Applewhite? I think they were setting them up with the inside run, and then all of a sudden you fake the naked to the right, throw back to the left. Walk-in for Duke Catalan. Great His play call. First collegiate touchdown for Catalan. Transfer from Texas. Has not played since 2013. He redshirted at Texas a couple years ago, then sat out last year as a transfer. The point after makes it 13 to 10, Cougars. Greg Ward with his first touchdown pass of the season. It's to the running back, Catalan. Uncovered out of the backfield. Tonight after Clemson Auburn on ESPN at Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. I know Scotty will be keeping an eye on DJ Durkin in Maryland. Taking on Howard. Also, of course, highlights from great games on ABC, ESPN, and other networks. Sports Center with SVP tonight after college football at ESPN. So the Houston Cougars have the lead 13-10 over Oklahoma. Greg Ward Jr., four of six passing 73 yards on that drive. Mix in the deep man. And elects to take a knee. It will come out to the 25 as we look at today's right combination brought to you by State Farm. All right, Obanaya Okoronkwo. I'm sorry, my friend. You're right here on the end of the line of scrimmage. Your responsibility is to cover Duke Catalan out of the backfield. You can see they have a little play action. There's a lot of mess up there. He kind of loses vision where he's supposed to be at. Sure enough, Duke Catalan wide open, and then look at him. He's got his hands on his head. He's saying, oh, man, I just let that guy score a touchdown. Great design, great execution from Houston, but a missed assignment by Okoronkwo on the Oklahoma defense. Let's see now how the Sooners respond. It's been a while since Baker Mayfield threw the ball. Mixon is in. P. Ryan still out. Mixon out of the backfield. Look out. Past the 30-yard line, dropped by Garrett Davis after a good first down play. Fellas, if you recall the big pass that led to that touchdown drive, the play right before the touchdown, they picked on Oboe as well. You had a wide receiver against a 250-pound linebacker, so he's swimming off the previous play, and he gets caught up in the next one, and it cost him. Again, Oklahoma, Tom, having trouble running the football since that first drive. He had a four or five Cougars, including Matthew Adams and Brandon Wilson over there, taking down Mixon, so a loss on the play brings up third down. It's a big third down for Oklahoma. Really big third down. Third and four. Houston's got some momentum. Baker Mayfield, this is when he's at his best. And you don't have P. Ryan. No P. Ryan. Went to the locker room. Third and four. Mayfield to the sideline, and it's caught, but just enough. Yeah, just enough to move the sticks there. Geno Lewis, the Grad transfer from Penn State with 90 career catches in Happy Valley. Gets on the first down. Good job by Gino Lewis. Knowing where the sticks are, getting just enough, about a yard more than the sticks. And a good accurate throw by Baker Mayfield. Trying to get him back in rhythm throwing the football. No incompletions yet. Seven of seven for Mayfield. Mayfield rolling out. Got a man wide open. Mark Andrews uncovered. Andrews taking it to the house, and the Sooners are back in front. Talk about great play calls. I'll say. Lincoln Riley comes back with that, a 64-yard <laughs> touchdown. He said, Major Applewhite, you're a great offensive coordinator, but I am the reigning Broyles Award winner. The assistant coach of the year in college football, Lincoln Riley, is the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. Great execution, too, and a little bit of a bust in the secondary by this Houston defense. 49th career touchdown pass by Baker Mayfield. 17-13, Oklahoma. Mark Andrews had seven touchdown catches last year. Caught only 19 balls, but they're all big plays like this one. 
Yeah, good throw by Baker Mayfield. Big boy running downfield. Get the knees up. Touchdown, Sooners. The AdvoCare Texas kickoff, presented by Walmart. Save money, live better. And in part by Nissan. Pacific Life, helping generations of families achieve long-term financial security for over 145 years. And Shop Field and Street, where traditions begin. This game so highly anticipated since Oklahoma went to the playoff and Houston made it to a New Year's Six game, and it has not disappointed. Uh, Oklahoma signed on to play Houston a couple of years ago. The Cougars weren't very good at that time. <laughs> so you look at Oklahoma's schedule. You get this in two weeks. They got Ohio State, then at TCU. They have a four-point lead here midway through the second quarter. Cougars will start on their 25. Let's go back to this touchdown. Defensive call is a little nickel will. Mike Blitz, it's a great job by Flowers getting after it. And then you see Andrews just sneaking right over the top. And there's nobody there. That's a vacated zone on the left-hand side. Like you see, 36, great job sealing the edge. Baker expanding, playing with speed. And there's nobody home. It's just a great execution by the Oklahoma offense and just an, un just an unfortunate call for the Houston defense. Would have liked to have the free safety a little over the top, but he's responsible far side. That's a really difficult thing, and a great job by Mayfield capitalizing and regaining some of that momentum. Did you, did you see Mayfield sprinting <laughs> downfield? I mean, he beat several defenders on Houston downfield just so he could celebrate with, with Andrews. He almost beat Andrews downfield. He was going, man. So Houston back on offense from the 25. Quarterback run. Here's Ward. A tattoo at the 27-yard line by Oka Ronquo. You know, you mentioned Lincoln Riley, who last year won the Broyles Award as the top assistant coach in college football. Tom Herman, now the head man at Houston, he won that at Ohio State when they won the national title a couple years ago. Ward dumping it off to Catalan. Catalan is dragged to the ground at the 29 by Stephen Parker. Got a third down long here. Catalan injured on the play. That's a piece they need. Their backup running back situation has really been in flux. It's a group of players, one in particular, Mulba Carr, who's a true freshman, had high expectations coming in. But the running back group behind Duke Catalan has been a little bit disappointing for this Houston team throughout fall camp. Samaj P. Ryan is back on the bench. That'll certainly help. Lincoln Riley, if uh, P. Ryan can go back in the game. Y you were talking uh, with Lincoln when we, we met about times you guys had together yeah. a few years back. <laughs> Lincoln and you were only a few years apart. We were. Uh, Lincoln actually was working at Texas Tech. I was committed to Texas Tech at the time. Lincoln picked me up from the airport on my unofficial visit. We became really good buddies. He's only a few years older than me. So it's always great seeing him. He, looks, he was 21 at the time then. He looks like he's 21 still. Lincoln is such... A fantastic coach has a great feel for this offense knows personnel and has really done a wonderful job there in Norman with the offense he'll be 33 on Monday third down and six for Houston time to throw for Ward time to run for Ward Picks up the first down to the 40-yard line. Catalan still on the Houston bench. Ward rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. He's going to throw it here to Dunbar. He's got some blockers. Dunbar thrown out of bounds by Cobb. There's a flag, and there should be a flag. He was clearly out of bounds. True freshman Parrish Cobb, instead of letting him go, threw him. And that's going to be 15 yards. Can't have that mistake right there. Parrish Cobb's about to get an ear fall. And Bob Stoops. A personal foul by number four of the defense. The penalty is 15 yards. And it's an automatic first down. Bob Stoops was all over Parrish Cobb. Remember Zach Sanchez 
now in the NFL, we think, although he got released, got released according to reports yeah. today after being drafted, but you know, Sanchez was their guy last year. He's gone to get a lot of young players in the secondary, including Cobb. Big mistake. Ball on the 37. Ward looking deep. Airing it out for Dunbar. Incomplete. They went right at Cobb. Pass was too high. That's four times Dunbar has gotten behind the defense. Four times. And Greg Ward right now is only one for four. They have to figure out a way to get on the same page because Dunbar's doing a great job winning. Ward, a little amped up, a little fired up, missing just a little bit long. You too many times for my comfort level, Luke. Yeah, and you know what? You're one for four because the throws you're attempting aren't high percentage. Yeah, the one catch was, one completion was a great catch by Dunbar. Play fake for Ward. Pressure coming. Ward keeps the play alive. Now sends it over the middle, and it's incomplete. And boy, he had Allen open. He just didn't have the arm strength to get it there. Third and ten. Greg, I think that this Oklahoma defense has been as well prepared as you can possibly be. They have not over-pursued. Yes. They have not been overly aggressive. They have been very cautiously, cautiously optimistic in their pursuit efforts, and that's why you haven't seen Greg Ward rip off huge chunks of yardage. Yeah, with the exception of the throwback to Catalan, they have been dialed in. you got to give Mike Stoops, the defense coordinator, a lot of credit. Catalan back in the game. You'd think Houston's in four-down territory. They love to go for him fourth down. Here's Ward to Dunbar. Back shoulder throw. Dunbar jukes a defender. Now he stepped out. Dunbar stepped out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Again, they target Parrish Cobb, the true freshman. Greg Ward says, I've missed you deep. Let me throw you on the back shoulder. If we can't hit the long one over the top, let me hold you up, throw you away, throw you open. Great job. And clearly out of bounds. Great throw. Wow. Greg Ward is a different yeah. type of player this year throwing the football. Night man. and day, Greg. Night and day from last year. That, that's what Tom Herman told us. Sometimes coaches say that, but he's all over it. He is. First down of the 12. Ward in trouble. Big trouble. Swallowed at the 21 yard line. Charles Walker got pressure for OU. Charles Walker, Will Johnson, Stephen Parker, you name it. Not a very good job on the perimeter by these Houston wide receivers. Usually so good blocking. Right there, couldn't hold up long enough, and it results in a negative play in the red zone. Here's Mike Stoops, Bob's brother. One time head coach in Arizona, D coordinator here at Oklahoma. Second down and 18 after that eight yard loss. Here's Catalan. It's a reverse with an additional pass. And Ward, he's got him. Down the sideline. Catalan knocked out of bounds inside the 10. Get a big chunk of it that. There is a penalty marker down. Somebody may have been downfield for Houston. You see that often in those kind of plays. There's also a penalty marker in the backfield. So two flags on the play. Usually you play that long. The offensive linemen, their internal clock just can't stay back that far. I bet you this is an offensive lineman downfield. There are two fouls on the play. And then there's the downfield. 51 of the offense, a personal foul roughing the passer by number 26 of the defense. Those penalties offset, replayed the down. Another penalty by Oklahoma. That, that's big. That would have been third and long. Yeah, and you can see Natai Rogers. He's way downfield, about six yards, trying to get back. If you want to take a peek at him right there, he is well beyond the three-yard window, trying to get back, running back, just not able to get back fast enough before the ball is left to go. He's his first start, Juco player, trying to figure it out. And then Jordan Evans, what are you doing? Can't if you're do him, why are you pushing the quarterback in the back? It's third and 30 if you don't do that. Unnecessary. Instead, the penalty's offset. Quarterback run, Ward. Making defenders miss in the hole. Gets to the 15-yard line. So he got five yards back. Evans on the stop, third down at about 13 coming up. They've been conservative in the third down red zone area. We've seen a couple of runs. We saw Greg Ward on an internal run, a sweep. I would assume right here they'll probably try to play it a little conservative as well. That's been the way they've done things so far up to this point. Maybe they break the mold here. 
but I would assume quarterback draw on third and long. Hopefully, Greg Ward can make a guy miss or two. They go five wide. That spreads out the Oklahoma defense. You see it there. Only five guys in the box. Ward's going to throw. Airing it out. End zone. Overshot. Chance Allen. Going against Jordan Thomas. Outstanding corner for Oklahoma. But they took the shot there. Here comes the field goal team. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. You got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Your best receiver, Chance Allen, against their best corner, Jordan Thomas. You got to take your chances and give them one. If you're Greg Ward, just a little high and outside, you'd like to have that one back. So here's a guy that kicked all of eight times last year, and this is his third field goal try of the first half. 34 yards. And he's three for three. One point gain, four and a half remaining. Oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to. Now for today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. We have a pair of Broyles Award winners in this game. Who's the only former Broyles Award winner to then go on to win a national title as a head coach? Hmm. I actually thought I knew the answer last night, but I was wrong. So if you remember really? the discussion. Interesting. I thought it was uh, Bob Stoops. That is incorrect. Ha. Huh. Stoops was an assistant in Florida, didn't win the Broyles Award. Won his national championship at Oklahoma in 2000. I think I have an idea, but I'm certainly not guaranteeing that it's correct. Cummings angling that kickoff, forcing a touchback. Oklahoma will start in the 25. Well, last year, Houston coach Tom Herman told his team that if they won the conference, he would get a grill. There is Houston rapper Paul Wall and grill aficionado Johnny Dang. And he did it. There it is. Yeah. He got it fitted for it. David Pollock said no way Houston would beat Florida State last year. <laughs> he was wrong. Is yeah. that a grill or are those? <laughs> looks like Edrin James' teeth that he's, uh, Pollock. He's got to eat some crow while he's got that grill in. I, I actually, as a token of good faith, working with you now this year, I wanted to give you a grill for yourself. I so appreciate it. You can use that whenever it is that you deem fit. I think that's very nice. Probably do it when I'm home alone. Fair enough. Rather than on <laughs> camera. Samaj Piran is back in the game. Here's P. Ryan straight ahead. And close to the first down. Brought down by Khalil Williams. 11-yard game. What do you got, Luke? <laughs> guys, guys, sometimes you just got to say no. You just have to. I, I, don't, I'm, I didn't even bring my grill today. You didn't bring the grill? No, no. Grills Flukes. at the hotel, boys. Flukes, come on. Here's D.D. Westbrook. And can't get away from Brandon Wilson. The help comes, and... It's a gain of two on the play. A second down and eight. Like it just goes back to the personality of, of Tom Herman. And Houston is trying to get in the Big 12. Yeah. And if they do, you would think there's a really good chance Herman stays. But if they don't get into the Big 12, with if Houston keeps winning, this program continues to ascend, he might be able to pick his job. He could have had the South Carolina job last year. Elected to stay in Houston. Mayfield off play action. He's going to run. Heads for the sideline. Out at the 42-yard line. We'll have a third down and about four here. Tom Herman just relates so well to the players. To his young coach, he's high energy. He makes it fun for the guys. I'll tell you what, if I'm a kid and I'm thinking about coming to play college football, Tom Herman would be a guy I would love to be recruited by. I think he does an incredible job. And his defense is going to have to be up to the task here on third and four, trying to get the ball back. Here and get the ball back in the hands of Greg Ward. Mayfield is nine for nine passing, 162 yards and a touchdown. Will he throw it here? It's an option. Mayfield keeps, and he's well short of the first down. It's Ed Oliver who is all over it. One of the biggest recruits in the history of group five conferences, a five-star guy from here in Houston. Yeah, look at that Oliver. I mean, he is absolutely unblockable at times, how good he is. I mean, he is as 
athletic as a linebacker, as big as a defensive end, and as powerful as a defensive tackle. Lukes, I know you had him rated very high coming out of high school. First five-star ever to join a group of five programs. We see the punt come on here. Good punt by Seibert, and the fair catch yeah. inside the 10 by Stephen Dunbar. 50-yard punt. Let's go back to Oliver. Tom, when you watched him in high school, did you think that he would pick Houston? I didn't, and I'll tell you why. It was because it was such an early verbal commitment. This wasn't a guy that, you know, went through the process and then boom, all of a sudden in January or leading up to signing day, chose Houston. He chose Houston early in the process. So if you're Tom Herman, that's like having a 500-pound Marlin on the line, but he's 500 yards away. And for them to be able to pull that off, and the signal it sent and the ripple effect it had for Houston, this program, the enhanced perception, I think it's invaluable. This is one of the most dominant defensive players in all the country a year ago. And I'll tell you what we just saw right there wasn't just great skill, it was a great motor. Tough for true freshmen to have that. Terrific player, hard worker. But Houston inside the 10 here, nearing two minutes to go. And Duke Catalan goes nowhere. Let's see if Bob Stoops calls a timeout. A little extracurricular activity. He's going to let the clock run here. Both teams have three timeouts. Houston. I'm surprised that he's not calling timeout. I'm sure he's waiting to see what happens on second down, but you got three of them. Yeah, but I think also with the way this Oklahoma offense operates, you don't need a ton of time. You'd rather have your offense on the field with timeouts in tow. Ward pitches it at the last second to Catalan, and Catalan has a first down and more. That's why Stoops didn't call timeout. Because <laughs> at least you took 30 seconds off the clock, and now Houston is in a manageable situation out near its 27-yard line after a 19-yard run. You would expect Houston to still be a little conservative offensively. You don't want to throw it three times and give the ball back with a lot of time to the Oklahoma Sooners. And as you said earlier, you don't have to throw it to get big plays because you get this guy. Not at all. I mean, this guy, you send everybody deep, give him room, he'll make a big play with his legs even if it's not drawn up that way. Ward back to throw. Has time in trouble. Moving around and now throws it away. Jordan Wade was chasing along with Charles Walker. Remember Oklahoma, we talked about losing Zach Sanchez, Eric Stryker, Charles Tapper. Those guys are gone. They lost four starters on the defense who were first team all Big 12. They yeah. got some good guys behind them, but <laughs> they got guys for sure. But they do miss Dominique Alexander, Devontae Vaughn. That linebacker core last year was as athletic as I've ever seen at Oklahoma. Oklahoma crowd on the box here. Second down and 10. It's a run play. Ward. And they just don't have the numbers there. Catalan dropped for a loss. Well defended by the Sooners. Ahmad Thomas it was a second team all Big 12 last year. And a team captain this year. You can see Oklahoma getting some fresh bodies out there too. They're close to the Oklahoma sideline. You have the defensive lineman ready to go out there. And sure enough, Matthew Romar, 92. Fresh legs on third and long an important down for the Oklahoma Sooners to get a stop to get their offense a chance to steal some points. Next snap will come inside a minute to go here in the half. Ward has been spectacular on third down today. Wide receiver screen to Dunbar. Flag down and so is Dunbar. Nice tackle by Tay Evans. Ward got hit late though by Okoronkwo again. Really, some dumb penalties by Oklahoma in this first half. A personal foul, roughing the passer by number 31 of the defense. The 15-yard penalty. At what point, if you're Bob Stoops, you say, you know what, you're going to sit out of play. That's twice. Well, he also, Okoronkwo has made some good plays, too. So, yes, he's had three plays that are absolutely inexcusable. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's a redshirt junior. You can't be making mistakes like this. You have third and long backed up towards the end of the half and you rough the passer on a screen that's inexcusable 
He'll stay in the game, though. The clock is running. Houston trying to get some plays off quickly here. They have all their timeouts. They fake the screen. Now throw it the other way. Incomplete. Probably smart play by uh, Cattle on that time. Not to die for. Just let it hit the ground and let the clock stop with 32 seconds left. Man, I'll tell you what. Charles Walker, 97. He just put a hit on Greg Ward. I mean, that's consecutive plays now where Greg's gotten hit. Maybe lose it just a little bit earlier if you're going to throw it away. Watch him roll to his right. Man. That's six foot two, 299 pounds of mean. Greg Ward needs to get the ball out of his hands a little faster. Ward on second down and 10. Slides up. Pass over the middle is caught. And now they're saying the ball came out. Bonner never controlled it. He lost the ball. That would have put the football inside the Oklahoma 45 with 24 seconds left. Instead, it's third down and 10. Let's take another peek at it. That ball was nose down, diving just a little bit. You see it, though, squeaking out right underneath the right elbow. Yeah. Ball comes out. Lanell Bonner. Tough catch, though. When that ball is sinking, it's hard for a wide receiver to go down and grab it if it's coming with that much velocity. Third and ten. Ward running around, being chased by everybody on the Sooners' defense. Ward gets out of there, throws it downfield. It's caught as he inbounds. Yes! Wow. Bonner with a grab inside the 45. The clock is running. The clock should have stopped. It's a first down. Nobody's caught the fact that the clock is running. Wow, what a catch. Wow. A timeout is called. There were six seconds that came off the clock that should not have, though. Clock stops on a first down, and Tom Herman is pointing, saying, you guys missed that. They'll correct it here. Go to the monitor. Houston calls their first timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. That's the catch of the weekend, and we still got 25 games to go. I don't know that anybody's going to have a better catch than that. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be shocked if Greg Ward was throwing that ball away. I mean, that is unbelievable, the extension. Wow. Look at that. Great awareness. Look at his left foot. I mean, he's got three good inches inside the white stripe. Incredible effort. He was parallel to the ground with his foot on the ground <laughs> when he caught the ball, Tom. Greg, I was literally standing on the sideline, play side right behind Greg. When he threw that, you could tell he saw he saw him coming back. And what do you do when you're scrambling quarterback? If you're the deep receiver, you come back. Yes. If you're the short receiver, you take off. What I was most impressed with is he intended to give that guy a chance, but he put the ball only where his guy could get it. And if it's incomplete, so be it. You line up and play the next down. Gave his guy a chance to make the play. They put four seconds back on the clock. So we're at 18 seconds. Houston's got two timeouts left. Ball at the Oklahoma 42. What a catch. <laughs> they get forward, though. There was some movement. A penalty flag. False start. A false start by number 51 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Now the right tackle to tie Rodgers. You see how long they're up there at the line of scrimmage, standing, making sure they have the correct play, which I absolutely applaud. Every play in a two-minute drill is critical, but it's hard for those big fellas to sit in that stance for as long as they were right there. They need to play with a little bit more tempo here to allow those guys to be get off the football. Ty Cummings, the kicker's career long, by the way, is 45. As Ward steps up, throws it deep. Into the end zone for Johnson. He can't catch up to it. Isaiah Johnson had Dakota Austin beat, but could not catch up to the ball. 11 seconds left in the half. And he ran right by him. <laughs> Isaiah Johnson, this guy, they say, he's got big-time speed. He just got to put it all together. How about this stat line? In their spring game, Isaiah Johnson right there, 15 receptions, 292 yards, 
and three touchdowns. That's a spring game performance. 14, real speedster, almost caught up to that one for a touchdown before the half. Ward on third down. Eludes one man and throws a strike to Bonner, and he gets out of bounds. He picked up the first down anyway. Clock stops with three seconds left. They, they got to kick a field goal yeah, here. have to. And this is right at Ty Cummings' long of 45 yards from last year. But again, how about Greg Ward? Fine time and then throwing a dart. Really well done. Well executed two-minute drill. They had the penalty. Get a free first down. You got to make the most of it. Good job by the senior quarterback getting his team in field goal position. 47-yard field goal try by Ty Cummings to give Houston the lead going into the locker room. And it's good! A perfect half for Ty Cummings, four of four on field goals. And Houston will get the ball to start the third quarter, and they'll have a lead. Well done. That would have been good from a lot further than 47. Had some adrenaline going right there by Cummings. Coming up, it's the college football halftime report. Can't think of a better man to fill in for the late John Saunders, a true pro, than a pro himself, and Stan Barrett. Stan, Mark May, and Mac Brown coming up. College football halftime report after these messages. Field and Stream Stores kickoff week. Welcome back to the Advocare Texas kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart as part of Field and Stream Stores kickoff week. Well, it's been 32 years since Houston knocked off a top three team, and the Cougars are in front at halftime, leading number three, Oklahoma, 19-17. Dave Pash and Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, our field analyst, and boy, Greg, what an entertaining first half. It's exactly what we thought. We also thought the two quarterbacks would be the headliners, and both were terrific. That's We've Got You Covered, brought to you by Jiffy Lou. <laughs> They're unbelievable. Look at the stat lines for both. Obviously, Baker Mayfield, his team's losing. Look at that stat line, 9 for 9, 162 and a tud. 15 to 28 for Greg Ward, really throwing the ball well, decisive with his throws, too. Been very accurate, missed a few down the left-hand side, but for the most part, this is an improved passing quarterback. He hasn't done much on the ground, though. He's had to make up for it because he only has 16 yards rushing. He's been phenomenal, especially on third down when they're in the field. They need to also pick it up a little bit in the red zone. Oklahoma was without Samaj P. Ryan for a bit at running back in that first half. But Joe Mixon had a terrific first half with a big catch. And he also had a rushing touchdown. Tom Luganville had a chance to talk with Bob Stoops a moment ago. Yeah, guys, uh, Coach Stoops was remarkably positive. He said there's three critical areas that they've got to eliminate. The stupid personal foul penalties, which really cost them close to 10 points in the first half. Being able to defend the back shoulder fade. Houston has not been able to get it over the top, but they've been able to catch the back shoulder ball. And then really what it comes down to is being able to stop Greg Ward on third down. That's the only time they've been dramatically hurt, and that's where Houston's big plays have come on offense. Yeah, Lugie, Houston, six of nine on third down. They ran twice as many plays as Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield didn't have an incompletion, but he only threw nine balls. Nine for nine, 162 yards and a touchdown. Houston will start the second half with the football. Brandon Wilson finds a running lane. Wilson all the way to the 37-yard line. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. Some first-half highlights from the quarterbacks. Both guys have been outstanding. You see Baker Mayfield right now getting outside, throwing it down the field. A little bit of a bust in coverage. Mark Andrews, the big tight end, rumbling, stumbling for the touchdown. And then Greg Ward keeping plays alive, being accurate with the football, and being decisive in the run game. You'd like to see his run numbers go up in the second half. Both guys have been off the charts to start the season. Nine carries for Ward, 16 yards. Catalan had 64 rushing yards and had a receiving touchdown. And here is Catalan on first down. And he is wrestled with 
by Matt Diamond to the ground. A loss of one on the play. Good job up front by the senior from nearby Katy, Texas. I always think the first drive of the third quarter is one of the most important of the entire game. It shows you the adjustments you made at halftime. Catalan again into a wall of Sooners at the point of attack. Third and long coming up here for Houston. Big third down right here early on. Greg Ward, they've never been afraid to call a run play, even on third and long right here. But today, the choice has been to throw the ball down the field. Let's see if they find number 88 down here at the bottom of the screen, one on one against number seven. He's liked that matchup so far today. Yeah, Dunbar, six catches already, 103 yards. They had a true freshman on him earlier, but as you said, it's Jordan Thomas, all Big 12 corner on Dunbar here at the bottom of the screen. Play clock down to four. They go empty. Ward in trouble in the pocket, and this time they got him. It's Jordan Wade. That is no easy task to get Greg Ward to the ground, despite the fact he's a buck 85. Yeah, you see Greg Ward, eyes immediately down here to his left. He was looking for Dunbar on the go route. Good job by Jordan Wade, 6'3", 310, wrapping up the very difficult to defend quarterback for Houston. So Dane Roy, a 27-year-old punter, when he was coming over, after he agreed to play at Houston, he was FaceTiming his special teams coach with a cocktail in his hand. <laughs> you knew that when you're 27. At 27. It's a very interesting story. And the fair catch made at the 27-yard line. You saw the graphic, former ice cream salesman. Yeah. He won the punt passing kick, essentially, for the entire country of Australia. It's our continent of, Custer, of Australia. I mean, <laughs> former ice cream salesman. It's classic, though. He was working on some onside kick and obviously a deep Australian accent when he was readying the kickoff team. OK, Mike, go. It was classic when he was there. You could hear it from a mile away. He's been very popular in the locker room so far. The best part about him, there is no attempt to turn the ball over and kick a spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Z ball, kick ball, hit it as far as you can, Luke. He does not care. You're right. Oklahoma with decent starting field position first down to the 28 yard line Mayfield moves around in the pocket going deep Westbrook broken up but a flag Jeremy Winchester who's Houston's best corner according to the coaches hard to tell if he didn't get his head around or what but he made contact before the ball arrived with D.D. Westbrook pass interference by number 24 of the defense the 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down Scramble drill right there. Yeah, he tries to get his head around, just makes contact too early. That's a good call by the officials and a fresh set of downs for the Sooners. Yep. So still no incompletions for Baker Mayfield in this game. Picking up right where he left off at the end of the 2015 season. He really looks in control of Lincoln Riley's offense. He was fourth in the country in completion percentage last year. Houston might bring pressure. They have like 400 pressures in their playbook. <laughs> we'll see everything. Got to study for it all. If you're Mayfield, he saw something there. He pulls it back and going to take off. Able to get away from one defender. Tapped out at the 48-yard line. So a five-yard run for Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield with a good check. You see Todd Orlando right there. He says in a given game plan, they might call 30 or 40 pressures, which is a really, really high number in college football. Second down and five. Mayfield in trouble. Down he goes. A sack at the 46-yard line. Ed Oliver was there along with Gerard Carter. Yeah, you watch it right here. This is just a bust in protection. You have Joe Mixon against Gerard Carter. That's a defensive end against a running back. That's a mismatch when it comes to rushing the passer. Good design for the bust up front by the Sooners offensive line. And you made the point earlier, Houston physically doesn't look like a group of five team. And up front at the line of scrimmage, they don't play like it. We saw it against Florida State when they shut down Dalvin Cook last year in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. They've done a good job Houston against this potent Oklahoma offense so far today.
Tonight, defending national champion, number one, Alabama, taking on 20th ranked USC at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. They're going to have a new quarterback. Greg, you've been there as a new quarterback for Nick Saban. It doesn't seem to matter <laughs> if you're new. It's hard, man. It's hard going against a good defense like USC, but I'll tell you what, whoever's going to get that job, they better be ready to handle the pressure. And you did. Won a national title your junior season as Mayfield throws here on third and seven. It's caught. Westbrook waiting. Gets the first down. All the way to the 37-yard line. D.D. Westbrook, the newcomer of the year in the Big 12 as a former junior college All-American. Watch the receivers on the outside. Look how long they engage these blocks. Jeff made 15, pushing the outside. D.G. Westbrook setting it up. Well done on the outside. Westbrook will get the yards. Here's and Westbrook get again. right here. Down to the 30-yard line, brought down by Adams. A gain of eight on the play. Westbrook will get these yards, but it's the guys blocking in front of him that really deserve a lot of credit, springing him and allowing him to work in space. They've targeted Westbrook six times. He's caught all six passes. Granted, there are a lot of short throws to him. Out in the flat. Ball on the 30-yard line. Second and two. Mayfield pulls it back. Going to go for it all. Over through Westbrook with Winchester in coverage. Third and two. I want to point out a guy right here. Number 41 for Houston. Steven Taylor doesn't get enough credit. He sheds the block of Mixon. Doesn't allow Baker Mayfield to get through the throw. As a result, the ball finishes wide and outside. That's a great job by the leading returning tackler for this Houston defense, setting up a third and short. And Mayfield there holding that right forearm after the shot by Taylor. That's his first incompletion. Third and two. They're going to throw it. Mayfield moving around, trying to see over the defense. Now runs. And boy, it looked like he had the first down, and then he got pushed out maybe behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're going to mark him just short, it would appear. Or are they going to rule that he had forward progress first? They're actually going to mark him past the line now. Looked initially like he went out of bounds. It's close. He's trying, line of scrimmage. he's trying to tell Samaj P. Ryan, hey, come get a block for me. Instead, Samaj essentially. Shuts the door. Hey, forward progress isn't stopped there. Now, he did stretch the ball out, but it looked like he was out of bounds before the first down marker. Let's see if they review this further. Not a lot of information there to overturn it. I think the call will stand if they take another look at it. And a timeout called here by Oklahoma. First down, OU. The Echo Care Texas Kickoff, presented by Walmart, brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company and the exhilarating new Lincoln NKZ. Shop Field and Street, where traditions begin. And Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Nothing like a game with playoff implications on September 3rd, but that's what we have with Oklahoma there last year, ranked third to start the season. Houston. If they were to win this game, they'll be the talk of college football just about every week with their schedule. First down for Oklahoma inside the 30-yard line. Mayfield off play action, drilled and sacked by Steven Taylor. He had 10 sacks a year ago. What a great job by Steven Taylor right here. Look at him time up the blitz. He sees the head nod. See the pulling guard right there. Cody Ford can't get out quick enough to take a piece off of him. He picks up his first sack of the 2016 season. I would assume there'll be many more where that came from. He's a terrific player. A senior from Cedar Hill, Texas. Six-yard loss for Oklahoma. They spread it out here. Five wide at Mayfield with a quick toss to Mixon. Houston all over it. Mixon loses a couple. Gerard Carter there first along with Matthew Adams. If you've noticed, guys, Oklahoma has completely abandoned any attempt to run the football. I don't know if it's a lack of confidence in their offensive line. P. Ryan, this entire drive, aside from the attempt where Baker Mayfield got hit throwing the post, has been a bubble screen, a flare route, 
or a wide receiver quick screen. I think they're trying to get Houston tired on defense, but right now, Houston's got all the momentum. It's not working. D. Ryan has been in and out of the lineup due to injury in this game. Third and 18. Mayfield being chased by Taylor. Spins around. Mayfield throws it away. Incomplete. He was outside the pocket, came back in. So that's a legal throw. No grounding. It is fourth down. They went with the exact same play that they hit Mark Andrews on for the touchdown a little earlier in the game. This time, Houston's defense knew exactly where 81 was when he crossed the field, and they did a good job containing Baker Mayfield as he tried to create. I know you watch a lot of film, and you watch practice of Houston's defense, but are you surprised at what you're seeing from them defensively? No, because they are an aggressive front. They try to dictate with their blitzes and pressures. They're very talented, too. The strength of this team is the front seven, and if you want to play football, against Power 5 programs like Oklahoma. That better be very deep and very athletic. Houston's putting on a show today with what they're doing up front. Boy, Oklahoma took a long time there to make a decision. They burned a timeout. They only have one left midway through the third. Tomorrow night on ABC, it's number 10, Notre Dame at Texas. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. 53-yard field goal attempt, which would be a career-long for Austin Seibert. It's short, and here's Brandon Wilson returning it. Wilson past the 30, past the 40. Wilson might take it all the way. He hurdles his own man and takes it home. Touchdown, Houston! He was the only player with multiple touchdowns on offense, defense, and special teams a year ago. He took that thing from one end of the field to the other. And I don't know if Oklahoma ever saw him. There's a flag down likely for celebration of the end zone after, after the, the score. Unsportsmanlike conduct by number one of the return team. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. It's his first of the game. You wonder if Oklahoma ever saw that Brandon Wilson was under the goalpost. They were down covering. They clearly noticed that a guy was down there. You saw him spread, but you see this all the time. I mean, dating back to 2013 with Auburn against Alabama when you have big bodies on the field it's very difficult to cover a speedy cornerback like Brandon Wilson now they're reviewing this did he step out of bounds on the back end line when he touched the football well the official was right he there was he was right on looking it. at the uh, yeah. foot he was right on it let's see he's in he's clean He's got at least a couple inches right there. And a pretty good catch by him, too. Very clear that this play will stand. Heads up by Tom Herman. An outstanding job by Wilson on the return. Officially a 100-yard kickoff return, or excuse me, missed field goal return for a touchdown, but that's basically 109 and 7 eighths. And he was on the tip of the back line. First game of the year, and look what all we've seen. I mean, we've seen throwback passes. We've seen uncovered guys down the field. We've seen a, a field goal return to the house. We've seen a guy diving out of bounds to catch a football. What a game so far here in Houston. Almost got tackled by his own guy. Had to hurdle him. And let's see if he stays in. After yeah. further review, He's in. the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. He had two kickoff returns. Two rushing touchdowns, an interception for a score, and a fumble recovery for a score last year. And now he's got a missed field goal. Return for a touchdown. He can do it all, man. Play a little running back, play a little corner, return man. This is fun to watch. It's 26-17. Houston leads midway through the third.
take a look at it. I mean, look at they're starting to cover down a little bit too late. That's why I say, Greg, are you sure they thought that I'll there was a what, player under there? I stand corrected. I don't think they knew he was down there. I'm with you. I think that they realized that as soon as he caught it. Clearly in there. It was such a delayed reaction. It was. By Oklahoma. That's on the coaches. And they had a timeout before that to talk about it. The last missed field goal for a touchdown. Tyron Carrier, 2010 against Southern Miss. Houston did it a few years ago. Good time in here. Guys, what you've got to understand about a play like that is you're out personnel. The, the field goal protection team, they got to have the big guys to protect. The return team's got all the skill guys. So you got elephants on ice versus jackrabbits. There's no way you're going to cover that. And because of the celebration penalty, they kick off from the 20. Here's Mixon. Mixon runs into his own guy. Brought down to the 32-yard line. The decent starting field position for Oklahoma. Well, last year, Houston... First out of the national scene, beating Florida State in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The program has never won consecutive games against AP top 10 teams. Even if they don't win, they have proven that they belong. But if they do win, they will be the talk of college football. Because of their schedule, they still have Louisville. And remember, they lost an, an American Conference game last year. That was a game that Greg Ward didn't play either. Only a handful of snaps against UConn in their only loss last season. But we got a long way to go. Oklahoma's got a terrific offense. Fourth in the country in scoring last year. But they had 10 points in the first quarter on only seven cents. Here's Mixon. Upended after a short game. Brandon Wilson on the tackle. Take a look at this defensive front. You see Ed Oliver. You see the first attempt to run the football. But this program and what an Ed Oliver does to it, and you don't even have to leave the state of Texas. So you're local with Houston at Ed Oliver, a five-star player, the perception of the program is changing, and you can do your entire recruiting footprint within a couple hundred miles of your city. Mayfield moving out of the pocket, being chased, nowhere to go, and oh, he got it to his man, Baxter. Gang tackled and fumble the ball. It's picked up by Houston. The Cougars get it. Howard Wilson comes up with it. Just a great play by Mayfield to keep the play alive and find Baxter, but then he couldn't hang on to the ball. Mayfield Baxter. thinks he was down. And Baxter is going to the ground. Watch this left knee. Let's see if it goes down before the ball comes out. It looks to me like this call is going to be overturned. Now, you can't see where the ball is coming out at, though, so it's difficult to tell. Remember, if the ruling on the field is a fumble and you can't see the ball clearly in possession, then they don't have enough video evidence to overturn it. If you can't see the ball, Knees down, right there. Can you see the ball the right, clearly? The right arm still has the ball, and then you see it get jarred loose. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under further review. We have American Conference replay officials. Again, can you see the ball clearly enough to say with 100% certainty that that was not a fumble? Because the ruling on the field was that it is. You can see the ball in the right arm right there. Knees down. And you don't see the football anywhere from any angle. It's got to stand, right, based on the rules of replay when you can't see the ball at all. It has to be indisputable video evidence. And when the ball is blind to the naked eye, you can't see it. It's impossible to know when that ball started to come out. So since the ruling on the field was, in fact, a fumble, I think this play might have a chance to stand. Luke, did you get a look at it down there from where you were standing as to how the ball came out, how fast it came out? No, I didn't. It happened so fast. And as you guys are seeing, and of course, I'm looking at the Jumbotron, not seeing all the looks that you guys have. 
the way he was contorted and pulled around, if you focus on the left knee, which I know is what you guys are looking at, it goes to Dave's point. Can you see that knee and the ball at the same time? No, Lugie, we don't, do man. It. You see the knee down, but you, you the ball, you can't see it conclusively with the replay angles we have. So. It's going to be interesting, guys. This is, I mean, you talk about a difference maker of a momentum swing. Most games are lost. They're not won. And so far, Oklahoma's made more, er more errors than Houston. And remember, Houston led the country in takeaways last year. It was no accident that uh, they had 35 takeaways a year ago. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Yep, you couldn't see the ball. Yeah. Even though you and I both agree he probably was down. He, does. He, he, he looked like he was down the way the timing lined up. But the thing about it is you cannot assume. There is no assumption that can be made. It has to be indisputable. The video that we had available to us, it was not. Good call by the official allowing the play to stand. So Houston with a huge opportunity here to extend the lead. They're already at midfield after the takeaway. Ward will keep and he'll get squashed. Charles Walker takes him down for a loss of the play. I'll tell you what, you got to give Oklahoma's defense a lot of credit. I mean, they've limited. They knew that the quarterback run game could really hurt them. Greg Ward has done very little on the ground so far. 11 rushes, just seven yards. That is very uncharacteristic for an explosive runner. You saw him there, Greg, shaking that right arm. After that tackle by Walker, how effective will he be if he has to throw it here? Option and a late pitch, but they ran out of room on the boundary. Okoronkwo was there. Catalan took the pitch and went out at about the 47. Another setback, one yard loss, third and 12. See Ward there still favoring that right arm a bit. A little bit. And you have to assume his right arm is just a little bit bruised or something. That can affect very easily the way the ball comes out of your hand. Forearm is very tender, makes it difficult to throw the ball accurately. Pressure coming from OU on third and 12. Single coverage, and Dunbar is there. Dunbar at 100 yards in the first half. He gets a first down and third and 12 here, a gain of 22. Going against Oklahoma's best corner on the back shoulder. It's impossible to cover. And Greg Ward has hit not one, but now two to Dunbar down, Dunbar down the left-hand side on that exact throw. Big-time pickup. And Greg Ward continues to excel on third down in the field. And again, it, it's Greg Ward was considered primarily a runner last year even though he had 17 touchdown passes he has really improved as a passer and we're seeing it today he's going to pump fake here look downfield air it out dangerous throw and almost picked off if not for chance allen the receiver made sure that dakota austin didn't pick it off that was a great play by chance allen i mean he this is about to be an interception I mean, no doubt about it dakota austin about to come up with that football Chance Allen playing a little defense. Well done. Saved your quarterback there. No, Chicago, you can't talk about Chicago. Second down and ten. Ward will hand it off. Catalan driven to the dirt. Matt Romar, the nose guard who spent most of training camp for Oklahoma on the sideline with a concussion. Made the stop, gain of only two, another third and long. Houston just picked up a third and 12. A little look back, you see on third down, trying to get the right play, trying to get Oklahoma defense to tip their hand. Now Major Applewhite gonna dial up exactly what he wants here on an important third down. Pass play for Ward, and terrific catch by Tyler McCloskey, a guy that does a lot of the dirty work in the run game, gets rewarded 
with a big catch to move the chains. And how about the ball placement? I mean, this is well covered right here by Jordan Evans. Throwing it away from the defender, and then McCloskey dragging the big linebacker just enough for the first down. It's a big-time conversion for a guy that I don't think gets enough credit, 45 McCloskey. Now that's two third-down-and-long conversions on this drive after getting the takeaway in midfield. They're in the red zone now. It's Catalan, stood up, and it's Jordan Wade there first for Oklahoma. Minimal gain on first and 10. Keep going back to Greg Ward and how dynamic he was when you put on the tape and watched him run around and create and be explosive on the ground. Seeing the clinic that he's putting on through the air has got to be really encouraging for this Houston offense. Got a touchdown pass in this game. Second and 10. And here's De'Eric King inside the 15-yard line. Tackled at the 14 by Evans. King, a true freshman who signed as a quarterback, was moved to wide receiver when there were some injuries at that position. Up-tempo, Houston trying to get up to the line quickly on third and four. Here's Ward with a quick throw to the flat. They got numbers out there, and it's a first down for Chance Allen, fighting through an arm tackle. First and goal, Houston. Look at this tempo, guys. They've got them on the ropes. They've got the numbers the way they want to, getting the ball on the perimeter, because you've got three on two advantages. Really well executed here. Here's Ward on the design quarterback run. Stiff arms one guy that can't get away from Okoronpo. A loss of four back at the 13-yard line. It's a good job by Okoronpo right there. He has made some mistakes in this game, no doubt. But he is still an explosive pass rusher. He's really good in the backfield. Look on the sideline right here. Oh, you look at... We're looking at the replay here to see if Okoronpo... And, oh, man. I'll tell you what, he's got, a, he's got a big hold of that. That would have been another 15-yard penalty on Okoronpo. We had the pa uh, roughing the passer earlier that led to points at the end of the first half on the field goal drive. Instead, it's second and goal from the 13-yard line. Ward throwing in the dirt. Pass intended for Chance Allen. You and Tom on SportsCenter detailed how Oklahoma practiced to get Ward. It, it didn't. You didn't see a lot of it in the first half, but here in the second half, twice, they, they really hurt Houston by making plays on Ward in the pocket to get into the ground. We'll see what they do against him here on third and goal. Pressure up the middle. Ward lobbing it. End zone. Incomplete. But a penalty marker down at the goal line. Chance Allen, the intended receiver, Dakota Austin was in coverage. Pass interference by number 27 of the defense. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. That's, that's four third-down conversions on this drive alone. Think about how they've gotten some third downs in this game. You've had a pass interference early on that led to points. You have a pass interference here that very well could lead to points, possibly six points here as they get first and goal from the two-yard line. Which you have a roughing the passer that led to a field goal at the end of the first half I think is the correct call. They got to be smarter when the ball's in the air. First and goal on the two. That's Catalan behind Ward. Ward to throw. He's got McCloskey and he's got a touchdown. now a pair of touchdowns Houston with four third down conversions a couple of third and long conversions then the penalty giving him first and goal on the two and they score on the next play it's a 16 point Houston lead late in the third quarter
Tyler McCloskey, he does it all for him. He blocks. He's a fullback. He's an H-back. He's a tight end. He can do it all. Right there, giving him a little love on the goal line. Touchdown, Cougars. Tonight, from Arlington, AT&T Stadium, number one, Alabama, and USC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. What does SC have to do to stay in that ball game against a loaded Crimson Tide team? Max Brown's got to stay within himself. He has to be accurate with the football, throw the ball down the field. He's not elusive. He's not a runner. Alabama hasn't, at times, had trouble against a dual-threat quarterback, so he's going to have to pick them apart through the air. He's going to have his hands full, though. This Alabama defense is, at, is as athletic as I've seen uh, in Nick Saban's tenure. Do you agree with that, Tom? I do. I, I think they are tall and long on the perimeter. The two edge pass rushers are unlike anything they've had before. You could make an argument that if Carl Lawson stays healthy, you could have the two best pass rushers off the edge in college football in Tim Williams at Alabama, Carl Lawson at Auburn. I, I really like this Alabama defense. That's tonight on ABC. Up next from Lambeau, the first major college football game ever at Lambeau Field. Wisconsin and LSU. I love Lambeau. You, you get to Lambeau, it's like house, house, Lambeau Field, house, house. It's in the middle <laughs> of a neighborhood. Here's Mixon straddling the goal line, crossing the 20. Oh, he gets crunched to the 25-yard line. Let's go to the studio. Thanks, Dave. Visit Houston Studio Update, and after throwing a pick on his first possession, JT Barrett has bounced back in a big way, tying the own school record of six passing TDs. He's also ran for one. Buckeyes rolling up 56 to 10 in the third, guys. All right, Cassidy, and here it's a 16-point lead for Houston. As you watch Baker Mayfield take the field, keep in mind, last year, early in the season at Tennessee, Oklahoma trailed the Vols going into the fourth and Mayfield led the Sooners back to win the ball game. Can he do it again here against Houston? They run P. Ryan. It was banged up earlier in the game. He gets a couple and Oliver hit him first, but P. Ryan able to pinball off him for a couple yards. And don't you dare count out this Oklahoma team. Not with number six running the helm. He was second in the country in completion percentage in the fourth quarter last year. The bigger the stage, the more the adversity, the better Baker Mayfield plays. B. Ryan and Mixon in the game together here on second down and eight. Mayfield with a ton of time. It's Andrews underneath. He'll be short of the first down with Howard Wilson in coverage. Third in about three. It's a critical third down right here. I think you got to get Baker Mayfield, maybe outside the pocket, give him a run pass option. They have to have this right here to get some momentum. Mayfield rolling out with a defender right there, dumps it off. And it's a first down for P. Ryan, stays in bounds. It's finally leveled out of play by Matthew Adams. P. Ryan, a guy that didn't catch the ball a lot out of the backfield, but they've thrown it to him several times here in this ball game. Move the sticks here with a pass to Piran. It's a good call by Lincoln Riley. Get Baker Mayfield outside where he's comfortable. Get him moving. If no one's open, he still would have had the opportunity to possibly run for the first down. Huge pickup for the Sooner offense. Inside a minute to play here in the third. Mayfield, well, Mixon's covered. Mayfield coming to the other side and throws it away. Jordan Smallwood was covered by Winchester. Smart play by the Oklahoma quarterback. Really smart. Sometimes the best play is throw it away. I mean, now that doesn't necessarily look great on the stat sheet, for sure. I understand that. But if there's nothing there, don't make a bad play worse. Sometimes the defense wins. They're on scholarship, too. Good play by Baker Mayfield, throwing it away and protecting second and ten. Only three incompletions on the day for Mayfield. He was perfect in the first half. Second and ten from the Sooner 47-yard line. And the play clock is down to three. They're not lined up right. Play clock at one. They have only one timeout. They get the playoff. Mixon reversing field. Great run by Mixon. Close to a first down. Boy, he is talented. He is so quick. I mean, he 
one cut. He can run inside the tackles. He can run outside the tackles. The perfect complementary piece to Samaj P. Ryan in the backfield. What a one-two punch the Sooners have at running back. Third and a yard. The play clock and game clock are the same, so they got to snap it here. Final play of the quarter. Mixon on the catch. And Mixon meets the defender at the 40. Winchester has the first down of the 39. So Oklahoma's on the move, but it's all Houston right now. The Cougars, 33, Sooners 17 with one quarter to play. Welcome back to the Advocare Texas kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart. The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper with us in Houston today on tour of all the Texas games this weekend. It'll be in Dallas tonight for USC Alabama, Austin tomorrow for Texas and Notre Dame. Oklahoma was in the college football playoff last year. Houston hoping that if it wins today, yeah, we got a whole season to go, but everybody will be <laughs> talking about if they were to win out, would a group of five team make the college football playoff? With a potential win over Oklahoma and Louisville? Absolutely. First things first, Oklahoma on the move here inside the 40. And this could be a double pass. Yeah. It is Westbrook throwing it downfield incomplete. He had flowers. This one will haunt you. I've missed throws like this before, believe me. This one, D.D. Westbrook, I'll remember this one for a while. Just tried to steer it. Anybody that's learning the quarterback position at home, never steer it, just throw it. Got a little bit too cute, didn't finish the throw as a result. A little bit too far for the intended wide receiver. A missed opportunity there. Houston's making the big plays. Oklahoma has been just off since that first quarter. And they scored 10 points. Mayfield lost the ball. Houston's got it. Another turnover by the Sooners. Cameron Malvo comes up with a ball. Another takeaway for the Cougars. Look at this right here. Tried to step up in the pocket. It's a great hand right there from Tyus Bowser. And a great recovery from Cameron Malvo. He's got, I mean, Baker's got everything you want. He's got two hands on the ball. Sometimes the defense just makes a play. Houston has relied on turnovers for so many years. Looks like that trend's going to continue here in 2016, Dave. 110 takeaways the last three years that spreads two regimes of head coaches but a lot of the same players if Houston scores here that might that might do it believe it or not if they can get a touchdown on this drive here's Ward and he's brought down for a loss ran right into Romar that time Okoronkwo was there again an Oklahoma defense that led the Big 12 in several categories but lost five starters four guys that were first team all Big 12 can the Sooners D step up, get a three and out, and get the ball back for Baker Mayfield? He also lost a lot of leadership, too, with all those guys at linebacker. Those were the emotional leaders, so in times like this, they'd step up. Who's going to be that guy for the Sooners today? Ward to the air. Throwing it downfield into single coverage. And the receiver stumbled. Dunbar tripped up as Jordan Thomas was covering him on the sideline. Third and 11. Just a little incidental contact right there. They try to work the deep ball to Dunbar once again. I mean, Dunbar's having a heck of a night. Just clicks his heels and goes down to the ground. Nothing you can do about that one. Just got to come back and play the next play. You got Jordan Thomas defending him. Thomas, one of the best corners. Likely future first round draft choice. Look at Ward's numbers on third down, nine of ten, eight first downs. Pass a little behind Catalan on third and 11. 
turns it upfield and gets to midfield, and that's it. Cobb on the tackle, fourth down and six. What a great job by this Sooner defense, man. That is a great, great job by that group. Sudden change, falls at midfield, all the momentum in favor of the Cougars. They come out third, three and out, and now their offense is getting the ball back loose. Here's the most important part, though. Get enough on offense to put Oklahoma in bad field position. Flipping field position here for Houston on defense might be the most important thing of that drive right there. Saw the Houston players turn to the punter and as if to say it's off. You wonder if they were maybe thinking about a fake there, if there's an option at all, the way they signal to the punter. Roy gets off a great punt. Houston's down there. Oh, they had a chance to keep the ball out of the end zone. Isaiah Johnson unable to do so. Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield back at it down 16 when we return. You're watching the American Conference on ABC. Representing the American today in a big way, the Houston Cougars leading Oklahoma. And time now. Affleck. Affleck trivia question. The only former Royals award winner to win a national championship as a head coach is Gene Chiswick. As an assistant at Auburn in 04 and won the national title as the head coach with Cam Newton in 2010. We have a pair of former winners of that award here. Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, and Tom Herman, the Houston head coach. Mayfield rolling out on first down. And his pass is caught by Jarvis Baxter. So a gain of eight on the play. Right now, if you're Oklahoma, you just got to play it. I know it sounds so cliche, but you just got to focus one set of 10 yards at a time. Just think about three downs that you have to go 10 yards. It's all you have to focus on. Don't think about what the score is or anything else. Driven to the ground in the backfield is P. Ryan. Nobody blocked Nick Thurman, so they lose four on second and one. P. Ryan has just not been able to get going today, but we saw that last year when Dalvin Cook struggled to run the football. Only 31 rushing yards for P. Ryan. Granted, he missed a lot of time in the first half due to injury. And here comes big number 10. Nick Thurman, warm out. Watch big number 10 right over the middle of the ball going against Jonathan Alvarez, who's making his first career start at center. Mayfield, over the middle, broken up by Wilson, incomplete. Intended for Westbrook. Oklahoma down, essentially, two scores still. Two touchdowns, a pair of two-point conversions. We'll punt it here instead of go for it, uh, going for it for them. Really well covered. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Well protected up front by the offensive line. No leakage and protection. You have guys running. It's just blanket coverage all over the place. Very difficult to hit a guy in stride and allow him to squeak out the back door when they're playing that close of coverage in the secondary. Line drive here. Dunbar. Signal for the fair catch. Pretty good field position for Houston when we come back. Care Texas kickoff presented by Walmart brought to you by AdvoCare. We build champions. Walmart this season celebrate game time with savings from Walmart and in part by Buick proud partner of the NCAA. Houston 33 Oklahoma 17. The AdvoCare Texas kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart, part of Field and Stream Store's kickoff week. Terrific crowd. Remember that Houston does not play its home games here at NRG Stadium. They play on campus, a stadium that seats about 40,000. This one seats about 65. Good turnout by Oklahoma, but the Houston fans have been loud. And people that are clamoring for the Cougars to get into the Big 12 will be loud if they end up winning this game. Here's De'Ara King on the loose, and he picks up nine yards to the 46-yard line. I guess the rule is you don't count out Tom Herman. He's got really good players, too, as we've seen. Again, the Navy game, Louisville last year, Florida State in the bowl game. Here's Catalan. Great play by Jordan Thomas. That's a huge stop. Make it third down about four now. Yeah, this is a Houston, but if you want to expand it two more games, how about... The run that he put together at Ohio State as the offensive coordinator in 2014, beating Alabama in the Sugar Bowl with a third-string quarterback, Tom Herman. Look, he understands that he has a chip on his shoulder, 
this team has a chip on theirs. They're ready to earn their respect. Ready for the best deal ever from Cable One? For a limited time, 25 bucks get scrimmage. So the Oklahoma defense, thanks to the hand of Charles Walker, might get off the field unless Houston goes for it on fourth down. I don't think they will. I don't think it's a safe play, Dave. They're going to go ahead and kick it again. Field position will be pivotal here as the fourth quarter continues to wind down. Thank goodness for Oklahoma. Get the hand up and bat the ball from the 5'11 quarterback there in Greg Ward. You have got to keep your offense on the field as much as you can this quarter because nothing has gone right for Oklahoma on offense in the second half. Lou's watching this Houston team. I mean, people that don't know them, you might not think they have the same level of talent as Oklahoma. That is starting to change with their most recent recruiting class, is it not? It totally is. They look like TCU on the hook, guys. That's what they look like. On the punt return, out of bounds at the 25-yard line, Oklahoma will start the possession there. Trailing by 16 points. Celebrating its 12th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. At this point of the game, field goals won't help the Oklahoma Sooners as they trail Houston 33-17. We welcome you back to the AdvoCare Texas kickoff presented on ABC by Walmart as part of Field and Stream Stores Kickoff Week. Oklahoma with the football, 10 and a half remaining. They've passed Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville. It's been all Cougars since the first quarter. Mayfield taking off and getting about three yards on the play. And Oliver on the stop. So much motor this young man has. I tell you what, he is going to be really, <laughs> really special. Did you see that, dude? I, we're Seriously? talking about a, a quarterback that can run. <laughs> and Ed Oliver just chased him down, going the other direction. Wow. Wow. They told us at one point in practice, he told the coaches, I can't feel my legs. He still ran the play and totally blew it up. This pass by Mayfield soars over the head of Dimitri Flowers. He had Flowers, too. It's third down and seven. But it's amazing how a guy like Ed Oliver can change your program, even though clearly they're headed in the right direction. But you take a look at him right here. I mean, he's moving up, completely runs the loop, Gets a hand on Baker Mayfield's backside and pulls him into him. That, that right there is special. Unreal. And he's 18 years old. That's yeah. the scariest part. Again, if, if they get into the Big 12, along with what Tom Herman is building here, with more players like Ed Oliver, it would be fun to watch this program over the next five, six years. And they bring pressure here on third down. Mayfield, Mayfield's pass high again. He just has not been on since the first quarter. He's intended for Baxter, fourth down. This whole Oklahoma offense hasn't been on. But you know what? Credit needs to go to this Houston defense. They've limited big plays. They had a few, and they resulted in points. Think about the long throw to Mixon, the long run by Mixon. Uh, Andrews on a deep touchdown after a blown coverage defensively. This defense hasn't given an inch, and they deserve an awful lot of credit. Seibert's punt. Bear catch signal, and Dunbar has it. Yeah, keep in mind, Oklahoma's been in this position before, preseason top five, and they have not fared well. Today's game-changing moment is brought to you by Benjamin Moore. Brandon Wilson has scored every way possible at Houston, with the exception of a missed field goal return for a touchdown, but that changes here. A 100-yard score. It appeared Oklahoma didn't even know he was back there. He almost got tackled by his own guy right here, but he stayed in bounds. They reviewed it to see if he stepped on the back line when he caught the ball in the end zone, and the ruling on the field of a touchdown was confirmed. So a first and 10 for Houston after the OU punt on the Cougar 27. And they're going to hand it off here to Catalan. No gain. Greg and Tom, if you're... Major Applewhite, are you conservative now? No, you be you. You play with tempo, do what you need to do. Think back, let's think back to the Peach Bowl and you guys were there. They slowed the tempo and Florida State got back into it. Luke, they're gonna stick to what they do. Yeah, they've got to. I think, again, if they get a first down, you'll see fast tempo. 
and then they'll dial it back a little bit. So we're seeing them take advantage of the play clock right here with 17 seconds winding down. That's where they're changing. They're giving the illusion they go fast, but also utilizing the clock. Second and 10, and Ward hung on to the ball. Okoronkwo tackles him. He gains a couple. That, that was dangerous right there, trying to get the exchange with Catalan. He kept it. But it's a third and long here. Can Oklahoma come up with another stop? Now I think it, without question, the ball needs to be in Greg Ward's hands right here. I mean, don't take a chance throwing the football. You want this clock to continue to run, and Greg Ward is the most explosive player on the field. He needs to have it with an empty set. I would anticipate a quarterback draw right here, unless Oklahoma comes with pressure. Or they get the single back shoulder throw to the side, which has worked several times in this game. Dunbar has been the target in those cases. Ward on third down, in trouble, sacked. Okoronkwo was back there first. Charles Walker in there as well. And the Sooners force another three and out to give the offense a chance. So what Oklahoma's defense has nothing to hang their hat about today. And they have played really, really good, especially in the second half. The adjustments they've made, they've contained Greg Ward on the running game. Greg Ward has negative yards rushing right now, which is remarkable considering he was a 1,000-yard rusher a year ago. He's had his opportunities. This Oklahoma defense has played a heck of a game. Dane Roy, a 27-year-old true freshman with just his second punt of the day. And Baxter with a fair catch, and here's a flag. Isaiah Johnson interfered. That is going to put the ball near midfield for Oklahoma. You got to stay out of the way. This is shocking. I've never been a gunner on punt team as a former quarterback, but I don't understand how you can make that mistake. You're up by 16. Oklahoma's about to have to go 65 yards, and that might get a free 15. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty and a first down. All right, let's bring in our national recruiting director for ESPN, Tom Luganville. Well, we talk so much about Oklahoma's presence in recruiting down in the state of California, uh, state of Texas. You look at the map. Of course, they're going to have a significant presence, but look at Houston the last two years under Tom Herman and look at not only the players that have been signing the classes out of the state but also the players out of Houston and the immediate area now we've heard some backlash for some big 12 coaches that we've had discussion about expansion why do you think that is I'll tell you why it is because in recruiting with the footprint they could recruit their entire class here at Houston and not get on an airplane that's amazing as Mayfield steps up in the pocket and takes off Across the 45, here's a flag thrown in the backfield. And this is going to be on the Sooners. Holding number 74 on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty and replay first down. So you take a look at this graphic. Now that's staggering. So what we've done is we've taken the last two classes, and if the kid came from Houston, that's zero miles we calculated. And then the surrounding areas, and then the rest of the state, if you calculate all of their signees, the average is 32 miles away from campus. That's unheard of in recruiting, and this is a highly populated city, one of the reasons why it's very attractive for Big 12 expansion. And if the Cougars hang on, this win will speak loudly to a lot of people, including the playoff committee. Mayfield in trouble, somehow gets out of there. They finally corral him for a sack at the 37-yard line, and guess who? Ed Oliver, who we've talked about a lot. Five-star recruit. Look at the motor. Just watch him. I mean, he starts on the stun away. He, he makes sure the back doesn't get out too clean. And then, you know what? Here, you know what? Let me go find this quarterback on the sideline. Let me get a hold of him. I want to get a sack. Greg Oliver, I mean, Ed Oliver, excuse me, is just incredible <laughs> at nose tackle. For an 18-year-old super freshman, He's going to be a handful for everyone he plays this year. Second down and 22. You'd, you'd have to think Oklahoma's four down territory with six and a half to go. We've got to hurry the play clock down to two. Mayfield over the middle. Andrews dropped the ball. 
pass might have been a little high, but normally sure-handed Mark Andrews unable to pull that one down. So it's third down and 22. Are you with me? This is four down territory. For Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. two-score game. You got to make sure you have enough time left on the clock if, in fact, you are unsuccessful on a two-point conversion. If you score, especially with the way the way your defense is playing and the way Houston can explode, you got to go for it here. But, but you got to get something here. You can't be in fourth and 22. They try to get something, a chunk with Westbrook, and they do out to the 49. Or excuse me, the 44, so seven yards, but it's fourth and 15, and right. Oklahoma will go for it here. I'm trying to rack my brain. I think you've got to find 25. Joe Mixon is going on the field right now. I think he's going to be eaten up because I expect Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, to blitz right here. Therefore, the next best target, find number 11, D.D. Westbrook. He's alone at the top in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Mayfield on fourth and long. Everybody covered. Mayfield looking. Takes off, but no way. He loses the ball. Mixon picks it up. Now Mixon running back at the 30-yard line. And he's drilled at the 29 by Howard Wilson. The Cougars will take over on downs inside the Sooner 30. Let's go to the studio and check in with Cassidy. Thanks, Dave, and what no doubt will be one of the best stories of the day. Cancer survivor James Conner in his first game back, delivering a stiff arm for one of his two touchdowns so far today. Pit up 14-0 over Villanova at the half. And coming up at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, Leonard Fournette and LSU taking on Wisconsin in the first ever major college football game at Lambeau Field. Dave, Greg? Be interesting to see and if Wisconsin can, can stay in that ball game and just how good LSU's offense is this year. Yeah, you think about Dave Aranda now, the defensive coordinator from Wisconsin, now the defensive coordinator at LSU. I wonder how much he knows about that Wisconsin offense. I'm looking forward to seeing his debut for the Tigers of LSU. From the Sooner 30-yard line, here's King. He's inside the 20-yard line and pushed out of bounds at the 15. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary with five and a half remaining here in the fourth quarter. The big play, obviously, the missed field goal return for a touchdown. And Oklahoma had a big drive in that first quarter, and they have really done nothing on offense since. Yeah, I mean, it's just been big plays for Oklahoma. They haven't been able to consistently sustain drives offensively. Baker Mayfield hasn't played a bad game, but they haven't been able to attack in the run game. This Houston defense has been tenacious. I am so impressed with this bunch and how athletic they are. There's Catalan pushing the pile. The clock continues to run. And if you're an Oklahoma fan, you, you've seen this movie before. Your preseason top five. You have all the hype. You're coming off a playoff appearance. And you struggle out of the gate. And look, if I'm Oklahoma, if I come up short in this game, I still have 11 games against the Power 5 schedule, a nine-game Big 12 schedule, plenty of meat on the bone to get back in the conversation, including a non-conference game against Ohio State in a couple weeks. This Oklahoma team, you better not count them out just yet. But they clearly got some work to do on defense. Offensive line more than anything else. Right. That offensive line has got to come together. And how healthy is P. Ryan? The rest of the way. Here's Catalan running through defenders, pushing the pile, and down to the one yard line. Houston about to provide the dagger with 4.15 on the clock and a first and goal. They go up tempo. Oklahoma not lined up. In trouble with the, hand, the handoff. The ball is fumbled into the end zone. Oklahoma has it, it would appear. Oh, it's a touchback. Oklahoma has possession in the end zone. A turnover on the goal line by Houston with 4.03 to go. Wow. Why do you do that, guys? Just hand the ball off. Makes no sense. On the, re on the goal line, one yard line, Oklahoma's hands on their hips defensively. They're worn out. They're gassed. Why have a zone read right here where the quarterback is a 50-50 option? Unbelievable. This can only end poorly. You give it because you have three downs to score, maybe four if you want them. 
run the ball downhill. Hand it off and walk away. Will Johnson recovered it. You see Catalan, if he recovers, it's a touchdown. But Will Johnson pounced on it first. It'll be Oklahoma ball on its 20-yard line. Here's the only thing. I mean, that, that's we, we see that so often, though. I mean, they do it every single day. They don't drop the ball very often. It's not like it's something that's that they're not doing throughout the whole game. So why, why at the one-yard line? Because why the not your offense. Because mistakes are they increase the closer you get to the goal line. So I think you take any question out of it by just handing it. And even if he gets stopped short, you still have two more downs, maybe three, to gain three feet. I mean, maybe a little bit less. More importantly, you hold on to possession of the football, and the clock winds down because you're not anywhere near the sideline. I understand running your offense, but I would deviate just a little bit when I get to the one-yard line. So now Oklahoma with just one timeout left, four minutes to go, needs two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. So they're, they're reviewing this. After further review, stand. the ruling on the field stand. First down. But again, Oklahoma has to score, get a two-point conversion, get an onside kick, because they won't have enough time with one timeout to kick it deep. Remember, they blew. Uh, they had to call a couple timeouts earlier. Very early in the third quarter, much earlier than I'm sure Bob Stoops wanted to. So now you're stuck with everything has to go right over the last 403. We didn't have a shot just to tie the game. Biggest thing, just get a completion on the first snap. Get the drive started. Mayfield to the sideline. A sliding catch made by A.D. Miller inbound, so the clock moves. Time is of the essence right here. You got to move a little faster. And the clock will stop if Oklahoma gets a first down. A lot of time off the, the play clock here for the check. They see the blitz off the right hand side, so they're trying to get to it, but valuable time coming off. And 30 seconds between snaps essentially. Mayfield, a strike to Westbrook, who's free. And Westbrook slammed to the turf. The clock will stop as they move the chains out to the 47 with 3.19 to play. At this point, maybe a double move with D.D. Westbrook. Maybe a slant and go. Something to try to steal one. If you plays into the drive, this is when you might take a chance to go downfield. Mayfield pumps to the sideline. And... It's incomplete, and that's a good thing for Oklahoma that it was because uh, he appeared to be inbounds. And had he caught that, the clock would be running right now instead of it just being second and ten. I'll be honest with you, Baker Mayfield's shoulder, his left shoulder went up, which makes me think he was trying to throw the ball deep. Westbrook sat it down, though. Maybe they weren't on the same page. It looked like they were trying to take a shot there, possibly. With the only really, truly experienced receiver coming back, Baker Mayfield trying to find him here in an important situation. Mayfield to Mixon out in space. But man, again, Ed Oliver, the 300 pounder out there covering a running back on a swing route. The guy's like an amoeba. He's everywhere. He just takes over the field. Hey, fellas, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the defensive secondary for Oklahoma. This was a team that lost every starter, including a first rounder on the back end. They had led the country in forced turnovers, and a big percentage of that came from the secondary. They've done a remarkable job outside of the opening throw to Joe Mixon. You're absolutely right. This Houston secondary has been outstanding today. Mayfield. Again, everybody covered. Mixon on the dump off. He runs through the arms of Garrett Davis. They stop the clock with the ball for 39. And William Jackson was a first-round draft pick, late first-round pick. And uh, as you guys watch film, I know you were uncertain. I think everybody was, including the coaches, about how this group would come together. But they were the, the bright spot on defense of training camp, according to the coaches. Mayfield looking for somebody to come open. It's Geno Lewis. Clock will stop again. 2.23 and counting. Once they reset the ball, ball is on the 25 of Houston. Mayfield with time. Now the pocket collapses. And the pass is out of bounds. 
Mayfield got leveled by Matthew Adams. And they're bringing pressure. I mean, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. It's a two-minute situation. It's huge, important downs. And you're able to call blitzes on the fly, Todd Orlando is. They practice these blitz schemes over and over and over again. He says, look, blitzes are our base defense. So they're very comfortable running them in these situations. And not a lot of teams are. So a lot of credit should go to this defensive coaching staff for the Houston Cougars. So Houston calls a timeout. 2.13 to play in the fourth quarter. Looking at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear, the AP Top 10. If Houston hangs on, I bet we'll see Houston in there next week. You guys see another potential upset? Auburn at home against Clemson, perhaps? Ole Miss over Florida State, or no, do you see Chalk? Notre Dame going to Austin to face the Longhorns. I think the Longhorns steal a win right there. Shane Bichelle is going to be the starting quarterback, and I bet he plays well in a big upset tomorrow for Charlie Strong. Mayfield on second and ten, throwing it deep into the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown by Mark Andrews. Emily Flag is down. Andrews with a huge grab, his second touchdown if it stands. And they'll go for two. Pass interference by number one in the defense. Penalties declined. Touchdown. They'll go for two, trailing by ten. Not a great throw from Baker Mayfield, but what a great catch by Mark Andrews. He had a touchdown earlier on a long, uncontested over route. Now he shows that he can catch it with some interference alongside. Fourth down, though, this is a gotta have it situation without question. They were shut out in the second half by Clemson in the playoff, shut out by Houston in the second half to this point. But they need this. Mayfield. Back of the end zone, broken up. Big time play by Howard Wilson on Jeffrey Meade. And it remains a 10 point Houston lead. Houston made a New Year's Six Bowl game last year, knocked off number nine Florida State. If they win today, it'll be the first time in program history where they knock off top 10 teams in consecutive games. And, and Tom Herman would not let any of the players talk at all about the Peach Bowl win. In fact, when referring to that team, they referred to it as that team. They yeah. never said us. Even in talking with the players yesterday, Herman had them so brainwashed that a couple of times Greg Ward said, well, that team last year, they listened. And they also, during their off-season workouts, didn't have any swag or gear from that Peach Bowl. They had a big question mark on it, said, who are you going to be this year? They're off to a good start. They have to try the onside kick here, and it's loose on the field. It appears Houston recovered it. Well, Houston had a chance initially on the first bounce, but they did recover it. It's Houston ball. Let's go to the studio in Cassidy. Mississippi State down one to South Alabama, and Weston Graves would miss a 25-yard field goal for the win. The Bulldogs stunned. 21-20, Jazz wins the final. Back to you guys. What a crazy first few days. App State almost beats Tennessee. Mississippi State losing. This is one that will surprise a lot of people when they see this final score here in Houston. I think maybe at first glance, but as soon as you start to dive into the Houston program, dive into the personnel they have, the playmakers they have, and this coaching staff, I don't think anybody should be surprised by how hard they played. Again, Oklahoma can only stop it one more time. Catalan on the run gets about two yards. Now, as we look at the Houston schedule here, and we'll see Louisville in the ACC November 17th, and then they have their American Conference schedule. With this win today, Greg and Tom, are they automatically in the playoff discussion now? Is everybody going to be watching each week to see if they win, knowing that if they win out, they're in? Absolutely, but Houston also has to keep in mind, from this point forward, they need to all go buy an Oklahoma jersey because they need to root for the Oklahoma Sooners because if Oklahoma continues to play well and wins the Big 12, that's only going to better help their candidacy, Lukes, as they move forward throughout the season. Certainly could. Let's get this play here. I'll chime in on my thoughts and your absolutely comment. Here's Ward trying to stay in bounds. Does it'll be third and long. Go ahead, Tom. 
Smart play there by Greg Ward staying in bounds and just laying down. I, I think it's a little premature to say absolutely. I, I still believe with the schedule in its entirety, you're going to have to look at what other teams could finish undefeated if maybe multiple teams. And it doesn't get easier within the American. It gets harder because when you have the best personnel, you're expected to win every game. If you slip up, against anybody in your conference it's over and I think that's the scariest notion for Houston and meanwhile for Oklahoma as you said earlier guys if, if they were to come back and win the Big 12 they're not out of the conversation but clearly the guys that they lost on defense they miss in a big way and offensively their line struggled today they couldn't sustain drives they need to figure out their offensive line I mean they got to be able to run the football a lot better than they did today in order to have the season a lot of people thought they could have. Tom Herman finding his wife. The Houston Cougars are the new darlings of college football. They knock off Oklahoma 33-23. surprised people last year beating Florida State for the most part they handled Oklahoma today only 13 points the final three quarters for the offense that averaged 44 points per game last year Oklahoma and had its stars most of them anyway returning an offense and if you look at their offense it was all big plays this defense for Houston unbelievable here's Tom well, Coach, you shocked the world once again. Now this is becoming routine. It's not becoming exception. What do you have to say about your kids today? They play really hard, and they play for each other. There's a genuine love on this football team. Uh, we, we, the, the game should have been over. We put the ball in the carpet, and not one defensive guy, not one, was hanging their head. They say, we got you, offense, and, and they came through. You have brainwashed this team when referring to the past as they or that team. Could you argue that this is one of the most coachable teams you've ever had? Very much. Very businesslike. There's no pushback. The culture from day one was ingrained. There was no complacency. I absolutely love these guys, and we got to go get ready to play another one. Hey, go enjoy this with your guys. One go heck of a job. Go Cougs. <laughs> but the demeanor much different from Herman than it was at the end of last year when they beat Florida State. They still got four months of football left. An impressive win by Houston today. H-Town takeover is real. Anybody that's in this building, anybody that's watching at home, look at the support that this team has. And they can go really, really far. And I think that with the talent they have on this roster, they're going to have a chance to be really special. Coming up next, from Lambeau Field, it is Wisconsin and LSU. For Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, our entire outstanding ABC crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Houston, where the Cougars knock off the Oklahoma Suitors 33-23.